Hi, welcome to our very first online community rallies 2020. Today we are very proud to bring to you our very first online community rallies. My name is Wenceslas. I am the host and the community head for the Skate Esports Mobile Legends community. And today we will be bringing you the a single elimination format of eight teams. And we will be having how this works is that for community rallies, all the participants will come in as individuals, and they will be if they will be a sorted into different teams so this is like the ultimate solo queue tournament where we'll balance out the teams and they'll be going in today we have seven teams with us in a single elimination format with the finals being the um, best of three so in our first game we will be having our team four versus team five uh, going up against each other we will be starting again very soon so i'm just very happy that you are joining us today and we will kick off that soon right now um perhaps we will show the format of the community rallies right now you see the bracket the bracket is a single elimination format where we will be having about this is the quarterfinal so we probably have about seven games today six to five to seven games today um if without further ado let's uh start off with the first match the pick and ban for the first match so over here we have LK Flex three four one one three and ninety three Slayer one two six two nine goes Amy uh Jazia. On the other hand on the right side we have LOL IMR Send Me Send Skin I'm Girl <laughs> Hyakugan Skylight Leg and Blobby. So let's talk about the first band. In this recent meta, the supports are very um popular. So you can see that both started banning uh, supports. First of all, the Selena going out because of her, her stun, her CC for the long range stun. Um, for the Diggy, of course, with that revive and that who is able to reposition teams. They also ban Ling, which is a very good assassin, which is very strong. Um, this is going to be an interesting match. We're going to watch the bans right now. Nana, that's another support that is um, being banned. So right now, with the carry open, with the, the in this meta where you know most teams are playing a very hyper carry meta, um, you can see that the MMs are all currently open, and we're gonna see whether both teams will be employing deploying that tactics. And yeah, without further ado, that's a carry for you over there. The carry goes up, and with that. First MM down, the raid team wouldn't be prioritizing an MM pick. So they'll probably be going for their tank picks. And um, yeah, Kufra is a very good tank to use. Valia is, of course, a uh, pretty solid uh, support that is still up for grabs. Other than that, um, you have your Fasa. Not very sure whether it's still very popular. But let, let's have a look at how this goes. So they went with a Cho and Velia, opening up the tanks with the Kufra being picked straight up by the uh, blue team. So this is something that we will want to have a look at. Farsa. Your team is picking. Farsa and Kufra, yep, that's a very good combo going right there. Um, with that Farsa ultimate, the feather strikes, it's very good because it can control the map and the entire team positioning. Both teams are putting in a lot of thought in this case. Um, very interesting to see how things will pan out. Tam was being picked up by the raid team, so this is something that we want to see. And if you are joining us today, thank you for joining us. Remember, stay safe, wash your hands, uh, sanitize your hands, stay at home, play ML with us. So yeah, pretty much. Your team is banning. The Claude being a uh, ban over there. Claude with his ultimate is something that is extremely strong. Uh, that's something that you wanna. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's something you want to uh, ban. Um, what else can they ban though? There's, there's their MM is picked. Their tank is picked. 
So that the last ban will be a very interesting ban on the raid team. They go with the Atlas. Atlas is a new character, and that character is very, very um, popular. They're very good at that um, RKO, you know, bring all the five members, pulling them together, pulling them away. They can engage, can disengage. Um, if the Atlas was left open, perhaps the combo on the blue team would have been very strong. So, with that final... No, not yet. Now Skylight is going to be choosing the next... Bruno. Oh, so they go with a Bruno in this Bruno case. Picking. Bruno would be... A... Interesting choice, to be honest. I was, uh... I mean, Claude and Carrie is the two most popular um, MM at the moment. But, hmm, let's see how this goes out with Bruno. Um... Silvana and Estes. I would say that the blue team has a really strong um, be, uh, team selection, to be honest. And we'll see how that goes throughout. Uh, the, the team fights in uh, the blue team is, is going to be very good. And for the red team, I'm not so sure how the team fights will go. I think maybe that's why they go with the Franco and the Cho. Cho, of course, can break the teams apart. Um, there's a lot of uh, push, there's a lot of pull, there's a lot of knockbacks on the red team. This is an interesting, interesting lineup. But we will, we will see how this goes. So if you're joining us, it's uh, 15 seconds to our very first match. I'm very happy that you guys are joining us. There are points that you can win throughout the entire season if you are unable to join us for this very first edition of our community rallies fret not this is a monthly event and because it's a monthly event the community community gets to come down and to learn and to mingle with one another to learn from one another not only that scape esports also have many other workshops that we work with local industry partners we have a we used to have camps we are still going to have camp probably this year we will also be having um, more online content going up such as the exp plus um all in june most of the things in june will happen so um maybe let's have a look at the skills that they have that's a triple flame shot on the blue team. I would assume that they are going for a very aggressive play. Meanwhile, we have uh, three flickers on the red team. So that would be an interesting pick. They will go for a red buff first. Um, let's see how blue team will go. Both teams will go with the red buff first. Very straightforward in that aspect. Now, Cho going in straight, engaging, that's dealing one third of their health. Very um, good exchange at the start. Valet and Cho in the mid lane, that's really... That's okay, that's that's alright. Now Sylvana on the other hand. Are we gonna see some action here? There's four members of the blue team. They are gonna engage at this moment. Probably wanna go for the blue. Now there's four members on the red team and the blue team. The engage goes in by Cho. Cho goes out. Followed up by Bruno. The red, the blue team sets the hue up. Um, they will go for the very first skirmish, protecting the blue buff. Red team went with their engage. However, red team used up all their flame shots and their engage fail. That was a very good defense by the. Uh, red team, sorry. The blue team went for tried to go for the steal. They weren't able to go for the steal, so um, kudos to the blue, uh, the red team for being able to prevent that from happening. Down in the bottom lane, you have three players going down for the uh, crab. Sylvana trying to defend that. Meanwhile, you can see the blue team is moving down. They're going to flank in in the jungle. You can see that. Um, in the jungle, you can see that there is... Yep, in the jungle, there is a engage going on. A blue team does not get anything, so they shall back off right now. Um, as you can see over here, the raid team is trying to funnel all their resources. Their resources to the... Bruno. 
and that has been going pretty well. The goal difference isn't a lot, Initiate but retreat. because of the initial engage from the blue team going in for the red retreat. team's blue buff, can see that they are slightly behind on goal differences. But now the red team wants to engage and go for a goal. They can almost hit down Kufra. Uh, meanwhile, Franco's going down low. Franco flickers away. Uh, Fasa goes damage the Bruno. Um, and Estes <laughs> uses ulti and they shall disengage. Oh, there's a pull on the Estes. They, they shall burst down the Estes. Can the Estes go down? That's the first kill on the Kufra. Beautiful play by Cho. Great hook by Franco. Roger going in. Can Roger do anything about that? The only way there's there's no way they can do about that. That's um okay, that's fine. Ah, uh, look at that. Fasa ultimate going in, Feather Strike onto Valia, but he was not able to uh, finish off the Valia. That was a good engage by the raid team earlier on. It's quite interesting to see how this whole game pans out. Uh, meanwhile, down back at bot lane, Sylvana and Rogers trying to do the push lane. Both are off laners, try and push the lane. Um, very soon it looks, seems that Sylvana might be able to push down the bottom tower with the bottom turret down that opens up the map for more space uh, for the blue team to move around. Meanwhile, the blue team is going in for the turtle. Will the red team be able to go for the contest on the turtle? Highly unlikely, but being called out is the Kufra. Feather Strike going down in again. Finishes of the Bruno. Meanwhile, Sylvana gets a uh, kill of the, the Roger and the blue team with the beautiful play by the Farsa ultimate, taking out three people and then finishing off the um, Rod, no, the Valia at that part of time. Very beautiful play by the blue team. After getting the turtle and getting the bottom turret, they shall move on and get the middle turret. The goal difference at the moment is shifting over to the blue team with that uh, beautiful team fight over there. The game though, in terms of goal difference, is still pretty much even. However, if you're looking at the red team, they, their main marksman, their main damage dealer isn't getting the goal that they need because um, it's on one death to assist but hasn't been able to secure the kills. Meanwhile, on the other side, the blue team, they have Fasa on one Q and the Sylvana without uh, with, with two Q. So still a pretty pretty close game. Beautiful pull by the Franco. By the moment the Franco goes in, Fasa use the feather strike. Finishing off the Franco, dealing damage to the raid team. And then Sylvana goes in, catches two players, finish off the Bruno, finishes off the uh, Valia, leaving the Chow and the Roger alive. Very good play again by the uh, by the blue team. They waited for the Franco before using the ultimate. Fasa is playing a very good game in this uh, match. Fasa finishes off Cho again, catching Cho off that um, through the feathered strike once more, going to down the turret in the middle lane, and the game is starting to shift. It's tied. With all the outer turrets down for the raid team, the raid team uh, is forced to move back into retreat deeper to their, their core. This also means that it's going to be harder for them to gain more XP as the game starts to shift into the favor of the blue team. Jazia, 5-0. Very nice play. Catching two people out and then catching one more over here. At the moment, it doesn't seem as if they're going for that hyper carry play because Fasa and Sylvana is doing such a good play. Oh, Sylvana's gonna catch! Oh, so close. Nearly catches the Roger out. But Roger did a very good job in pushing the bottom turret. Now they are able to relieve some pressure in their lanes. But with that 4k difference, and this game, can the blue team turn the game around? Just to remind you guys, this is a single elimination bracket, which means that if team, if the red team loses this match, they will be out of this edition of the monthly 
uh, community rallies. Launch, attack. Not much action happening right now, just uh, the blue team trying to scour for the red team, knowing that the red team is trying to push out their lanes. Meanwhile, blue team looks like their objective now is to secure the um, objectives around the map. Establishing map control. Lord is up in about a minute. I would say that the blue team might be shifting their focus down to the bottom of the map. Meanwhile, red team knows that they are protecting their jungle, moving in a bunch. Trying to look for the opening for the right opening but down there you see once more the feather strike dealing tons of damage and Franco has to flicker out of that goal difference now still at 5k in the favor of the blue team blue team securing all the objectives even in the um raid team Jungle, Feather Strike once more, creating that positioning, creating that gap between the red team and the blue team. Now with that said, there's 10 seconds of the Lord, I foresee that they will go for the Lord. Red team has an option to choose whether they want to contest for the Lord, or they want to continue pushing out their lanes and create um, having good wave management. We shall see at this point. Oh, sorry. That is just a turtle. It's still only 9 minutes. Um, my bad over there. That is the turtle. They are not going for the Lord yet. The Lord will be up probably in 45 seconds. Has the Lord come up yet? Yes, the Lord has appeared. So they will be moving in for the Lord now. Red team will be left with the decision whether they would want to contest for the Lord or defend their base with super minions and the Lord. Looking at the map, can see Kufra opening the map, being in that position over there to foresee if they will contest for the Lord. But that will not be the case. They will secure their jungle creeps first and this will happen. They, the blue team will be waiting for a lot. It will probably crash in the middle lane. So that might be the decider for this very first match of our community rallies. Request backup. Request backup. Can see that both team composition is the polar opposite with one team very focused on the team fights, very focused on bringing them together, very huge uh, splash damage that's very good. Um, CCs, the, the healing, the, the damage control and everything, that's, that's a very good play by the, the blue team. Now, this will be the final team battle. Will they be able to make it alive? That's knock up by Franco. Franco's gonna go low without their tank. Can they defend this turret? Turret's going down low. That is the turret down. Will they invade now? Vader pushing away. But Sylvana, Sylvana, the MVP with Farsa in this game. Sylvana is dealing tons of damage, putting the teams out. Looking at this, there's a double kill by Farsa. Farsa is going to have. Nope, Sasa's not going to. Using the Feather Strike, Franco's going down low. Fish is a triple kill. Over there, this is gonna be a GG well played. For uh, no, Fasa will not get a kill on Bruno, but brilliant game done by the uh, raid team. So this is a this is our very first match. Congratulations to the raid team. You proceed to the next round. Right now, we will be looking at the stats over here. We can see the MVP. It's uh, Fasa, but to be honest, I would say that. The Sylvana was playing such a great game. The Sylvana was uh, creating a lot of spaces. The Sylvana did a very good follow-up from the engage of uh, the, the team. For the Kufra, he does his job. He's really been the one taking most of the damage in front. But I would like to highlight certain plays from the game. When, when um, in the mid-game, when the Franco went for a hook, that was the moment Fasa saw the opportunity to go in with the ultimate. Leading in with the ultimate, Franco went down low and with that, 
the the tank for the red team was down and they, they took advantage of that. Sylvana seeing that opportunity move up, caught two of the red team members, and that from then on was the defining moment of that game. This is our very first match. Fantastic play by both teams. Congrats to the blue team. You move on to the next round. Um, for the red team, don't worry, you get 50 points each for being part of these uh, community rallies. Stay tuned, watch the matches. You might be um, a lucky draw winner for the points. So, right now, we will take a 15 minute, 5, five minute break, 5 to 15 minute break, and we will be back with the next game after that. Thank you so much. We'll see you for our second match of the day. It will be between um, Team 2 versus Team 7. That's that.
I'm sorry And I know and I know that you'll forget I wake up in the night in a cold sweat To face it Is it over for us now before it began? I know it's crazy but in my mind I had plans I had plans Did I
two match are happening at the same time, but we will be showing you match uh, Team 2 versus Team 7. So, welcome back. We are still on our first quarterfinals. The previous round, we had Team 4 that went through. And we are now in the pick and ban phase again. As you can see, we have some of our recurring community members, Wishes, Asaloth. On the other side, we have our Skip Esports representative, Slither Boy. That's really cool, right? So, now is the pick and ban phase. We are going to be looking at a certain bans on the blue team. They decide to go and ban Claude, which is a very strong MM in this meta. And they decide to ban both of the strong MMs for this round. Claude and Carrie has been banned. This leaves the opponent's team with lesser pool of heroes. So that's very interesting to see how this is going to be going um, all together. Meanwhile, the raid team decided to go with the ban for the Ling, which is also a meta hero. Very interesting how this whole uh, game will play out. So if you're joining us again, welcome to our Scape community rallies. This is the first time we're holding it online, and I'm your host and the head of communities at Scape Esports Wenseless. I will be bringing you through the games today we are having a single elimination format where the final game will be three best of three. Wow. All the matches from now to then will, will be a best picking. of one. Things to take note for community rallies, when you're part of community rallies, there are point system that you can accumulate over the season of six months. Every three months, the shop window will open where you can exchange and redeem these points that you earn being a participant in uh, mobile in our community rallies for gifts, for prizes. In six months, there's a bigger prize and that's where everybody work towards it. Other than that, Escape Esports will also be able to bring you so new you know, workshops, um, plenty stuff for you to take part in, to learn more about esports, to pursue your passion in esports. And if you don't know where to start, Escape Esports is the place for you to start. Back to the pick and draft, we see that Grog is picked for the blue team by Wishes. Um, and the other team decide to go with Selena and Atlas. Selena and Atlas. Atlas is a very strong tank. Um, Selena is a very strong support. Meanwhile, we don't know whether Sliver Boy will go for the Kufra. That's a tank. They are probably discussing how they will go ahead. But Sylvana. Sylvana it's that one character that performed so well in our previous match. Will that same thing happen for this match? We will be able to find out. Your team oh! Is banning. He went for a higher Busa. That is an interesting pick because um, this meta wise, the assassins I would say, I would say that Assassins are still not back to its former glory back then when you had Gushen going around slaughtering everybody, when you had Fanny going around slaughtering everybody. That has been since nerfed, I feel. And Hayabusa would be an interesting pick. I don't know how effective that would be. However, you can see that they haven't picked that MM, so this would be an interesting choice to see whether the MM would be the main um, difference for the red team. So red team is team 7 and blue team is team 2. This is the first round. Uh, this is the second round of games that we are having today. They decided to go with uh, Chang E. Your team is picking. That is... Okay, one with a Chang Er. Uh, so they haven't gone for an MM. What would be their strategy though? Mm, Sylvana Grog, Grog is always a popular choice. Would they go for a double tank? I don't think they need to go for double tank, Nana. but the Nana locking by Punction. Very popular choice, very good uh, control of positioning. That Polymorph. 
is just an annoyance in the scheme of the grand scheme of things. So, how will the raid team reply to this with their picks? This will be their final pick. Mm. Are they going to lock in the Xbox? I, I feel like they'll change in the last minute. To oh, they went for the Xbox. Okay, so let's have a look at the skills that they're going to pick. Um, two flame shots, very popular choice. Both teams going with two flame shot. Um, the shoe is up for the blue for the blue team, so that that's okay. Two, we will see how this game goes. I think overall it's quite a balanced game. I don't think that one team is, uh, in terms of composition, is stronger than other team. Atlas is a very strong tank. They can he can change the whole positioning of teams with his RKO. That slam is just um, insane. So with that being said, the only thing for the um, blue team that they have, they don't really have much knockbacks except for Cho. But Nana has the stun for her ultimate and she Whoa, also have the um, polymorph that's Five able to disable the um, heroes. Now we are off to the start of the first match. So let's go through this match and have and hope that it turns out as a good game. <clears throat> oh, down at the top lane, I think that Sylvana is, is engaging uh, Xbox. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, four of the raid team is engaging in this moment, exchanging blows. So you can see what they normally do. They clear the, the waves, go for that um, health buff that gives health. I can't remember what it's called, but that's a common strategy, so both will go for that. And then they will get their buffs and move on from there. Very straightforward starts to this. You can see that Sylvana is aiming to cut lanes, so that's why Sylvana is playing so up high at that area, not being afraid of um, the Xbox at all. Allowing by cutting the waves there. Oh, down in the bottom in the mid lane, though. Um, Grog is going down low. Will Wishes make it out alive? Wishes got killed by first blood by Sliver Boy. Beautiful play over there. Um, Wishes got called out over there. Don't really know what happened, but there wasn't much follow up by the Nana and the One One. So probably that's why um, there wasn't damage going out on the other team, and they were able to. Oh, sorry, the higher Busa. The higher Busa is Choco Love Janie. Very nice play by Janie over there. So, that's the first kill of the game. That's the first blood going to Hayabusa. Perhaps Hayabusa it's, is their main damage um, <clears throat> dealer for this team composition. So, if you're joining us again, welcome to our Escape Esports Community Rallies. This is our second game of the day. I foresee that the, there's going to be a team fight over here. Um, Grok defending again, making sure that the raid team don't come near. They are 1 1. Over here, they are not going to gain anything, so both teams shall back off at this point in time. But what I like about this team is look at the top look at how Suvana is just cutting the lanes making sure that the pressure keeps going at top that is what she's doing as an off laner ensuring that the wave management keep going in and keep putting the pressure xbox have to retreat to heal his health but i think that the first turret might go down for the uh blue team oh Chang'e gets the kill finishes off the um cho over there oh grog Beautiful play, finish off the Hayabusa, deals done a ton of damage on the Atlas and the Selina. Can he get the Selina though? There's that flame shot going in. Beautiful play by the Grog, finishing off the Selina and the all the flame shot nearly getting the Atlas over there. That turning uh turn around by the blue team despite having the choke get caught out. Royce uh, wishes very good play over there. 
dealing tons of damage in return as as a grog. While the follow up by the team, uh, by one one and Nana, ensuring that there's the polymorph going out from uh, going out and disabling the raid team. So now it's a slight change in goal difference as the goal difference is now shifting over to the blue team. Oh, over there, Grok blocks the Selena. Selena is out by herself. Can Selena make, out of this, make this out alive? Um, no, uh, sorry, Selena does make it out alive. But that block by Grok was perfect over there. Meanwhile, top lane again. Look at that, Silvana doing ton of damage down on the Xbox, finishes of the Xbox. And that is the turret going down at the same time. First turret being destroyed by the blue team. Blue team piling tons of pressure despite um, losing that first blood over to the red team. Can red team reply to this? Down you see Cho sewing the turtle. Oh, Grog almost finishes off the Hayabusa. Hayabusa makes it out alive with her skill. Grog at this point of time. Two kills, um, even a 1-1 one, one and level 8, two assists, not a very bad scoreline. Tedo is being um, taken by the blue team, that gives more goal, a lot of advantage, the Atlas with the RKO onto the Cho finishes off, the, the Cho finish off by Selena, but 1-1 one, one and Grok. Finishes off the rest of the team, finishes off Selena, finishes off the Atlas. Triple Q by the 1-1. One -one. Can it go for Maniac? Beautiful play by 1-1 one -one and Grog. That was that follow-up by the 1-1 one -one is magnificent. Wiping out the entire team. This is a turnaround and the pressure is just mounting up onto the red team. Goal difference at 5 minute mark is 6k. Looking at the character stats. Wise, you have your croc. You can see that one one is the the main character where they're funneling all of their uh, items, uh, all their farm to her with four point four k co. And uh, the amount of mask that the whole team use can see is like hyper carry meta again, right? Four members with the mask and one member without. That's where they want the farm to go to. And at this point, she already has um, two of her main items. And that will only continue to pile up. Back to the team fight, we see Grog menacing, being that tank in front, um, breaking the positions, moving the teams, uh, moving the red team away, creating that space for the blue team. Grog going in again with his uh, wall and then his knockup. Selena, even though he got a stun on the Grog, isn't able to follow up because there's a ton of damage going in by the Nana. Atlas though, hiding at his uh, tower, there's, there's not much he can do at that point of time. This is now very one-sided. Can the raid team turn this game around? There are still opportunities for the raid team to turn it around. Atlas though, is the kind of team that, uh, is the kind of character that's able to Oh, Sliver Boy nearly get that Nana, but Nana procs the... Um, oh, can he... Will he get caught out? He got caught out by Sliver now getting pulled back. Barely made it out alive. Now we go back to the middle of the map. We can see the main battle. They are crashing in. The waves are crashing in at a 7 minute mark. The Selena though, tried to go for the stun. Wasn't able to go to the stun. The wave management is really good by the blue team. You can see Sylvana is all Sylvana has been doing throughout the entire game while staying out at the top lane, making sure that the waves go. Cho was able to take a Q underneath the turret, but that was finished was by the Xbox. 1-1 one, one now. Beautiful! Um, ulti by the Atlas. Selena following it up with the double Q. And then 1-1 one, one though is still alive. 1-1 one, one gonna get another Q over there. Oh, 1-1 one, one misses her skill. Can 1-1 one, one get that Q onto the Xbox? No, 1-1 one, one almost got a Q on the Xbox, but. The Xbox was able to make it back to his fountain alive. Xbox is gonna go for that 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one under the turret, taking tons of damage. Followed up by the Chang'e. Chang'e is close to the Silvana. Has to be careful of the Silvana's pool over there. Is careful of the Silvana's pool. But that game, that was almost turned around. Just that the Marksman, the Silvana has been able to stay alive. 1-1 one, one now. 6 kills, 5 assists. What else can she do?
Oh, they're trying tons of damage to go on right as long, but Sylvana is so tanky, so strong with that skills. Can Sylvana get the next pool? Atlas RKO to save the Chang'e at this point of time. Again, beautiful play by the Atlas. Atlas playing a very good tank game, defending his mage, making sure that the mage doesn't get hit by point morph, doesn't uh, get caught out by the Cho. Once again, beautiful play by the um, Atlas. Now the game is on a 12k goal lead. Wow. It is it is quite a mountain to climb at this point of time. Uh, Hayabusa being burst down by the 1-1 one -one and the Grok. It's only a matter of time before all their turrets fall. Just look at the amount of damage that the blue team is dishing out. Unable to do any RKO once again. Can the RKO save this team? But 1-1 one -one decides to go out with his ultimate. Dealing down of damage under that, under that fountain. Can he get one more kill in that fountain? Maniac by 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one has no respect for the other team. 10 8 This is such a dominant performance by the um, blue team at that point of time. Good game, well played. Congrats to Team 2 for moving on to the next round. What a dominant performance by Team 2. Just look at that 1-1. One, one. 10 6 Wow. Um, I would I would like to give credit though for the raid team's Atlas. I felt that the Atlas as the tank, he played such a strong game. But don't be upset that you lost this round and got eliminated. You still get uh get fifty points each. So this adds on to the entire season and I think this is quite an interesting game because um with that win we will see who will be playing against team two in the next round. Um. <clears throat> so this is a don't don't be upset about this. This is quite. This is only the first game. Um, we do come back for our next community rallies. I hope you guys enjoy. There's still the. There is still the, um, lucky draw for you guys to get certain points that you can accumulate over this entire season. So right now, we will come back soon. This is um. The first round next match onwards we will be tuning into the semi-finals between team one and team four and then team two will be playing against the winner of the other ongoing match team three versus team six so to then give us about 30 minutes we'll see you back in uh, at about 2 45 see you
Hi, welcome back. We are on to our semi-finals of our Community Rallies April edition. And right now, I'm just going to talk to you guys a bit more about Skip Esports. So Skip Esports, what we want to do is we want to create this platform for you to be able to take part and explore the esports industry. And we have quite a few programs lined up throughout the course of the entire year that we are creating for the, you guys. So for community rallies, well, that's one of the things that we engage different communities to come to Scape. We work with them for them to come up with programs for, the separate, for each individual communities. This is the Mobile Legends community that we are engaging. And we are having a tournament today so that the youths are able to explore a bit of competitive play in a safe environment. Other than that, we are going to be having workshops. We are going to be having masterclasses that we are working with the professional teams where, where we're working with um, industry partners. If you want to be a caster, if you want to be a streamer, we are also working uh, workshops for you guys to learn more about these different aspects. So with that being said, um, do check out Skate for more of these kind of details and we are more than happy to see you take part in our programs to explore your passion. So without further ado, let us head back to the next game of the day between Team 1 and Team 4. The first semi-finals of the day and we will move over to the pick and ban phase right now. So right now we have Team 1 and 4 having the pick and ban. Right now, over here, we can see the two supports are being banned out by the blue team. This is similar because Team 4 in their previous match, they also banned the supports. Um, one was Selena and one was Diggy. Diggy, of course, with that revive, with that repositioning of players. That is a very strong... Um, CC to have because you want you don't sometimes you want to secure the queue you can use the, you can proc that in sometimes you want to keep the tank away from the fight and be unable to shoot the MM you can pull the tank away so there's quite a few variations the long range by Selena though Selena as a support not only can he can she stun the person but the amount of damage that she can do is insane. So that is one of the reasons why people like to ban Selena. And sometimes Selena can't be spotted, right? You, you, if you don't pay enough attention. So we are going to be looking at the raid team. They decided to ban the Atlas and also the Claude. Um, Claude, in the recent um, ML season, the MPL season, you can see how the Claude is just such a powerful pick with its ultimate is able to do and tons of damage and after it's done with its ultimate it will transport back to its clone so its positioning is all over the place it's very hard to catch a clot out as an mm so that's a very good ban also by the raid team atlas earlier on we see how a good atlas plays being able to shoot its teammates being able to reposition um the opponent the RKO is such a strong utility Your skill that the Atlas bad. has. So, it is understandable why the Atlas has been banned. Now, we're going to be having the look again at the blue team's peak at the moment. Um, carry, hyper carry, meta, definitely going out. Sylvana, another pick. That's the most popular pick picking. out of the three games that we have uh, showed so far. Sylvana, you can see that it's, it can get rather tanky. It can be able to um, take soak up the damage and yet dish out that same amount of damage to his opponent. And it, it is also able to pull and slow down the opponents. This is such a useful skill, especially when you're able to catch four or five it within that, that grab. So we will see how this pans out. On the raid team, you can see that they decide to go with two assassins, Ling, with his ultimate being able to decimate the um, opponent's MM. Um, Hanzo. Hanzo is an interesting choice, right? Because like, um, Hanzo is a, is, a, is a character that can do tons of damage um, and it's hard to find. Just 
don't know what is the MM gonna be for the red team at this moment. Going for Granger, long range uh, distance, doesn't need the blue buff, definitely go straight for the red buff. So that would be an interesting thing to go. Um, this is gonna be quite a messy match, I would say. They'll be all over, probably going to intercept each other's buff, probably going to be um, trying to be a pain in each other's plans, and it is aggressive from both teams. And that's what I like to watch, an aggressive match from both sides. Again, the flame shot. It's a very popular choice to finish off people from far. And if you look at the Uranus, Uranus decides to go for that execute. Uranus is a monster of a tank. It soaks up so much damage in the early game, especially one-on-one. -on -one, hardly any characters is able to burst down the Uranus. So far, I only can think of Thomas. If Thomas is able to deal, cause it deals well, true damage. That's why the Uranus Normally, not a very good matchup against uh, Thomas, but there isn't a Thomas on the opponent's team. So, let's see how this works out. So, they're going for the very safe play. Uh, on the contrary, from what I thought they would do, uh, like an early game invade in each jungle. This isn't happening at a, t at a point of time. Both MMs will just go for their respective raid buffs. While Lolita will be the one taking care of the mid lane. Suvana on the top lane doing the same thing, right? With the team 2 strategy. Yeah, Yorinus, of course, at the bot lane. Let's see how this match. Um, if you're watching right now, say hi to us in the chat. Say what you think about this match. Support your friends if they're playing. Um, just give us a. Talk to us in the chat, we will reply to you and enjoy this match. Grok over here in the middle of three people getting caught out, being put. Um, Grok with that flame shot, make, creating that distance away, uh, will make it out alive. Nearly get caught out at a point of time. Uh, over there, I can see Ling stealing the uh, creep from the blue team's jungle. So, Ling, you can see how Ling jumps across everywhere. He's just not going to be easy to catch. And again, wow, Uranus is going to get caught out. Will Uranus get first blood by the carry over there? This is what I say. Like, Uranus should be a strong uh, tank, but you have three people jumping on you. There's nothing much you can do over there, can you? Even uh, so, because you're only just level two or three, it's still the early game. Uranus still doesn't have that first item oracle up, doesn't have the regen up properly, got caught out right there. Nice play by the carry and the Kufra. So down at the top lane, you can see Kufra is going to make a move on the Hanzo. Kufra is getting ready to jump, misses the Hanzo, goes for that flame shot and will make it out without much engage at that point. Meanwhile, look at over here, um, carry reveals herself because Kufra is over there. Can carry go for that uh, Grog over there? Um, just doing some damage over there, but will not, will not be able to do much at this point. Top lane wise, can see that Sylvana is engaging. Hanzo kills the Hanzo. Will Granger go for that kill on Sylvana? Granger is getting out position. Doesn't know what's coming after him. Go in for Kufra. Kufra goes. He doesn't deal damage on that, but will tank the turret damage. Five people onto that Granger. Finishes up that Granger. There's nothing the red team can do at that point in time. Very, very beautiful play by the blue team. Securing that uh, Q of that Granger, not allowing the Granger to get fed in the early game. With that, you can see that they will go for that turtle. That's because by moving up the top, securing that Granger, they will move for the next objective for that turtle, getting that goal for the rest of the team. But that, there's the engage right now. Very beautiful play by Uranus, being able to take up most of the things over there. Um, the Grog goes in trying to do damage, but look at that Sylvana following up on the Hanzo. Hanzo has no reply at the point like Lolita. Can Lolita make it out of life? Cause Grog is going to be chasing. Uranus is also going to be chasing. Grog blocks it, that 
um, Lolita and it finishes off by that Granger. I would say it's a very good one for one exchange at the top lane over there. But that turtle went to the blue team, so blue team's uh, sorry, that turtle went to the blue team, yes, it went to the blue team. And you would expect the goal difference to increase, but somehow or other, the red team is still dominating in the uh, goal difference by a bit. Um, I don't really understand why and what went, but that's probably due to the fact that Ling is left alone to be farming all over the place. So, down in the mid lane, they might want to go for that turret. Just have a look at the Ling. He's going around, securing all the jungle creeps, and is always able to make it alive, make it out alive. There's no way they can catch Ling at this point of time. Ling is just on a free farm, level 9 at this point in time. There's nothing that they can do. All this while they're, while they're engaging in fights, while they're engaging the raid team, Ling has been happily jumping around, securing the farm for himself, securing the creep for himself, securing the XP for himself. For himself. I don't think I'm able to call out Hanzo's full name. Hansel's full name, uh, 4512086151825251. That's not easy for me to pronounce. But, um, Ling, doing Ling stuff, doing a very good farm at this point of time. With Ling being able to do that, Ling will be able to do more damage. Let's just have a look at Ling's um, items at a point of time. He's about to build his very first second item over there. Meanwhile, you look at the goal difference. Ling is on 4k goal just by farming every single jungle. And the third was stolen by the Granger. Granger trying to make himself out alive. Can Hansel do anything to protect the Granger? No, but uh, they will not take the risk to go for that uh, Granger over there. Uranus got the wrong side of things, got caught by the blue team as they do tons of damage but Hanzo will take that long range damage and try and finish up the um, the guy over there <laughs> I can't see but okay then the ultimate goes down dealing, dealing tons of damage onto the Natalia Natalia can't do much because the damage is over there Whew. Ling is on a roll to be honest Ling is able to farm all by himself um, he's just not going to be taking certain fights and this is depriving the blue team of all their buffs because Ling is just having fun um, taking all the buffs away from the blue team. Meanwhile, look at that over here. Kufra trying to protect his carry, but Granger using his ultimate, bursting the carry down all the way to that low health. But Ling will be taking this opportunity to go for the Kufra and then follow up by the attack onto that. Carry, carry can't escape. Now Ling is on a roll. Three Qs. It looked as if the blue team was winning this game, but with Ling being such an OP character, stealing every single buff and stealing all the jungle creeps, the damage isn't gonna be happening for the blue team at the moment. You can see that this goal difference is mainly because the Ling is left by himself to farm all the jungle creeps in the blue team. Uh, team's jungle. With that, the Ling is being able to out-level and out-scale all the other team members on the blue side and what will the blue team be able to do to reply this because their main damage dealer, the carry at this point of time, doesn't have enough damage. Carry can see level 9 trying to dish out the damage Dishing out the damage onto the Uranus, but not on the Granger. Granger is able to dish out more damage on the rest of the team. Able to finish out both the tanks, and then the carry goes down by the um, Hanzo because the tanks and the front line doing such a good job blocking the um, carry from this Sylvana. Um, trying to push that lane as Ling looks to capitalize on the fact that Sylvana will not be able to damage but of course knowing that Granger is going down the Granger does a ton of damage onto uh, the Sylvana and it's finished off by the Ling at this point of the time Ling is doing Ling stuff jumping over the map getting all the creeps managing the waves while the rest of the team goes on a rampage feeding the Granger at this point of time can the blue team reply to whatever is happening because of the fact that the carry at this point of time doesn't have enough damage. Look at that, the Sylvana, yes, is on 5k gold, but that Link on 8k gold. 
His items are already going to be built for this. Blink's going to go in. He's going to do his ultimate soon. Doing tons of damage. Urena's going in as a mid tank. Trying to do the back line. But can they do the de damage on the back line? Because at this point of time, while Ling is down, Granger is still alive with Urena's over there. And Hanzo piling the pressure on the top lane. Carry and Natalia is down low on health. Can Carry defend this? Because at this point of time, if Carry takes any damage from the Granger, it's going to be almost half a health gone. The raid team, as though as the start didn't go very well for them, seems to be making that turnaround right now. The raid team with a 12k goal lead going up front because most of the goal is on Link. Look, he's almost close to 9k goal, nearly gonna get his fourth item even without boots. He doesn't need boots, right? I mean, he's able to run around Lord, being so free. His mobility soon. is just a pain for the blue team because the blue team is unable to deal with his farming. He's left all alone to farm. There's no reply. Ah, oh, the Kufra goes in, but there's no damage because the carry is out there by herself. Oh, no. Carry trying to do damage on the Granger, but Granger finishes up the... Uh, sorry. Granger finishes up the Sylvana. No. The... Natalia, sorry, the Natalia went for that, but wasn't able to carry, gets caught out by the Ling. And that is a wipeout. This is going to be a GG well played. Will it be a GG well played? Yes, this looks to be a GG well played because the raid team will crash in onto the turret. Doesn't need that minion waves as much as we think they do and will finish off this game. That is a very strong, dominant uh, display by the first team. But Team 4, you are not out of this tournament yet. You still have your third and fourth placing. So do stand by because we will be able to um, spectate the next semi-finals to see who Team 1 is going to be playing against. Team 1, you are off to the finals of our very first online community rallies. Congratulations. Very good play by all. Um, give yourself a good... Uh, clap on your back. So we are, are going to have a look at the items and look at the goal differences. Just look at Ling, right? Ling has 10k gold. And at the start of the game, he didn't do anything at all. All he did was farm. Somehow you can see how um, he was able to farm and disrupt everything. He's able to get all his items up and he was able to take up most of that, that farm, right? Um... Granger didn't have a good start, got caught out a few times, but the team was able to refunnel all their resources to him to ensure that he gets his um, items. Look at both teams wise, you can see that they really wanted to feed that Granger, but, um, oh, sorry, feed that carry, but at a certain point, that wasn't going so well. So Natalia ch changed over to that jungle item, trying to get that. Um, damage up too for carry couldn't do much at 5.7k 5, 5 without, without much items not able to dish out that, that amount of damage and the two tanks has been doing a very good job to block it so I think this is a very good game um, yeah with that being said we will be going for a short break so team 2 and team 3 We'll be getting ready for our second semi-finals of our uh, community rallies. Um, after this semi-finals, we will be having the third and fourth placing. So Team 4, don't be too upset. You still can fight for third place and third place is worth uh, 150 points. That is quite a lot of points for our community rally. So we hope to see you and the viewers back in about 15 minutes enjoy i'll see you back again okay 25 minutes i'm
Hi guys, welcome back. We are going for our second semi-finals of the day. We will be having Team 2 versus Team 3 come together and play for the chance to go to the finals. One thing to note though, this is Scape Esports Comedy Rallies. We are very happy to have you guys join us again today. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance to take part in this tournament, we do this on a monthly basis to allow you guys, to let you guys have a chance to mingle with new friends, try to improve at your skills, and perhaps learn more about esports in general. So at Scape Esports, we come up with programs for youth to take part in workshops, to take part in many um, different kind of programs that let you find out more about Scape e uh, to find out more about the esports industry. So, right now, we will be having our match soon. It will be starting in about a minute's time. And we are really happy that you're able to join us today. So, one thing to note is for us in the... In somewhere in June, we will be rolling quite a lot of new online content. And this online content will be something that will educate you guys more about what you can do in the esports industry, what are the various things you can do to take part, your first step into esports, all of these different aspects of esports will be available to you through our Scape platforms. Scape is happy to be a platform for youths to um, explore more about their aspirations, to explore more about the things that they love to do, such as esports such as music such as dance and scape esports is proud to be that hub for communities to come along and to promote and amplify these drivers in the youth um in the youth local youth scene so without further ado we will be heading to our second semi-final match of the day team two versus team three team two and team three both equally dominant in their previous round, will be matched up this time around um, for a shot in the final. So we will be having a look at their picks. Your team is Selena being a very popular band for all the teams that's been happening today. Claude also another very popular band. This game is... The meta recently has really been the focus on one main carry and um, the rest of the team supporting and funneling that farm to that carry, defending that carry at all costs and allowing that. That is a very good band, Sylvana. Sylvana has been causing havoc 
throughout the entire of community rallies today and we will finally be seeing somebody betting Sylvana. So another thing to to be wary about, we don't know whether this will happen again, is the link. The link that was allowed to farm all by himself. Will they also go for the link? Okay, no, they decided they will go for the carry instead. Carry is a very strong marksman. After being able to um, gain her very fast item, she starts dealing tons of damage through auto attacks. And your skills basically just stacks the the um, critical hit and the true damage. But for the carry, it's all about giving her the proper um sorry the proper farm and as the game carries on the carry will be a menace to deal with so this is how the pick and ban phase has been right once a marksman has been picked the other team there's no point they pick and uh they, there's no point for them to pick a marksman first because the marksman is already picked on the other team so they will prioritize the other important roles in the team and for this, they decided they shall go with an Atlas and a Grog, both meta tanks. This will be quite interesting because now we, you have, after you selected your tanks, it's all about will they go and pick a support? Will they decide like, okay, no, we can still afford to, um, afford them to ban somebody and I'll still have my main damage dealer. So we won't be saying who they are going to be picking for their a big damage dealer. This is interesting pick. I haven't seen Harith uh, playing for a while. Probably <coughs> an interesting pick for their mage. While the other team, for the blue team, they haven't had, haven't secured their tanks yet. We shall see who they will be picking for their tanks. But first of all, they will have the. They will be having the Your first ban of the opponent's team. Blue team decides to go with her full support ban. Uh, Selena, Valier, and the Diggy. All of this are being uh, picked out. So, <clears throat> X four, your team is picking. So now it's for them to be choosing a tank. Would they go for a tank? Actually, I would assume that they would go for a tank. That, that is probably a troll pick by, by Wishes. He's probably not going to take Johnson. I'll be very surprised Hayabusa. if he locks in the Johnson. While the uh, Hayabusa is already confirmed. Kufra. That's right. He was Your only trolling us. Picking. He will not go for the Johnson. The Johnson isn't a very popular tank. Um, mainly because it just doesn't offer as much CC as much as the other tanks that are available on in the game. I can only think that they might go for a Granger. Oh, they went for a Camilla. So, if they are going for a Camilla, the main focus would be on the Harif. 1 1 Bruno. They will go for a Marksman. Definitely Bruno. go for a Marksman. Yes, they go for the Bruno. Triple Flame Shot on the <laughs> Red team. Is that an indicator of how aggressive they're gonna play? Nope, it's, it's not. They're gonna go with two flame shots. Uh, triple flicker on the blue team. That's also something that I am not very sure whether it will happen. But because the blue teams don't want to get caught by the CC, I'm assuming the flicker is ready to save them. If you're looking at the heroes that have the flicker, it's heroes that already have skills that are able to move them that are like pseudo blinks that are able to shift them out so for them to be 
picking Flicker. They are just very wary of the Grog and the Atlas. If the Grog Welcome lands a very legend. beautiful block, and then the Atlas go in with the RKO, that would be quite a pain for them to deal with. So here we go, the second semi-finals of Community Rallies. We will... Oh, Nana! Very nice troll in that uh, grass over there. Nose sees out that Grok, polymorphs that Grok. They will be able to uh, clear out this wave pretty quickly and move on to that top uh, health bug. They will have to protect Bruno at all costs. So you can see that um, the Bruno will go for that blue buff too. The, the Bruno will go with both buffs. And probably fo have a main focus at the bot lane. Or oh, are they gonna catch a Kufa out? Kufa gets caught out at that point of time. Down to half the health. But that's still okay because their carry is still out. But carry got a stun uh, over there and they will disengage. They will not choose to engage at this point of time. It's still very early game. There's not much reason for them to go unless they are securing objectives. Both teams are taking it slow, not in a rush to invade each other's um, tanks, uh, uh, each other's jungle. But down at the top lane, they decided that they shall go for that ghost, go crap. Oh, over here, Cho sees out the Grok trying to catch a grog out maybe uh, waiting for the right opportunity to reposition a grog oh the carry tries to go for that that thing over there goes first for the first kill blood. first blood goes to cho that is unfortunate they wanted the first kill to go over to carry but i guess that was a misplay by cho perhaps and you can see the invade in reply to that first kill will check out whether the blue buff is on kufra going in flickers out Goes for that mage over there, trying to deal damage to the Harry over there, but then is caught out by the Axe Block. Harry keeping a distance, making sure that he does not die. Carry will get knocked out by Atlas. Hayabusa takes this opportunity to go in and assassinate the back line. Can he get that uh, higher, uh, that mid, that Harry, but the Atlas, beautiful play. The RKO goes out again, repositions the Hayabusa. Very good reply, Raymond blocks that. Uh, Nana, Nana's gonna proc her passive very soon. The Nana will proc her passive, goes down low, tries to turn the game around on that uh, Xbox. Kufra catches the Xbox out, finishes that Xbox. That's a uh, 3 for 3 overall play. Very nice play by both teams, replying to each other. There's not much of an advantage for any of the teams at the moment. At this point in time, this is a very good um, gameplay by both teams, replying very close, very close from each team, edging each other edging each other from that exchange. Now we go back to the middle of the map. You can see the raid team is trying to establish some dominance over the turtle. Most of the, the both teams are actually guarding the bottom of the map cause that's where the turtle is. The turtle has spawned. Of course, that's a very important objective and they might be going for that turtle after some um, exchange some exchange if they are able to get any of their members low red team decided to make a move for the turtle at that point of time harry outs, uh, outs his ultimate atlas repositions two of the players back to the center of the team fight despite the flicker the carry is gonna go down by that bruno almost goes down to the bruno Makes it out alive. Grog will take the chance to chase after. Misses the the wall. And then they decided to go off and pick off that Nana. That is a very good play by the red team. Atlas. Fantastic play. Repositioning the teams with that RKO. Being a very pain to the plans of the blue team. They shall now go for that turtle. As they originally wanted but can Kufra and uh, Kerry get take this opportunity to go for a turtle no the turtle has been slain by Bruno but look at that Alice Alice being that 
wall in front of the blue team saying stay away from my damage dealers you are not gonna have a piece of them the game is now back slow again despite that heavy engage at that middle lane the goal differences is still only about 1k goal difference Oh, the Atlas gonna go for the carry and the Nana, but got intercepted by the Kufra. They shall finish off the Atlas. Will not be finished off by uh, the Atlas. Atlas catches three of them, but the Bruno. Look at that ultimate of the Bruno. Being able to down the health, but they are not able to finish up all three of them. Very fortunate that Nana's uh, passive has been procced at a point of time. Saves the team from that team fight, but they got that one kill of the Atlas. Atlas has been playing a very good game at this point. Very crucial to the team fights of the red team. It looks as if every time the Atlas is gonna die, Atlas changed the game around, literally turns the game around by pulling in all three of the members of the blue team into the turret, gets um, ulted by that Harry, and Harry started doing damage, put it, outputting the damage. That's why they went for the flicker. That's why the blue team decided, hey, we shall play it safe. Let's go to Flicker. Let's not go too aggressive and not overcome it against this composition of the Atlas and the Grog. Kerry dishing out the damage down onto Harith. Oh, but Kerry got blocked by that wall. Will they be able to follow up that block at that point of time? No, that will not happen. They will leave to see another day. Harith is engaged by the Kufra. Kufra pushes away the tanks. Will they be able to do the damage on the Harith? Nana finishes off the Harry, but look at that double Q by the Atlas, then followed up by the uh, Bruno. Brilliant team play again by the red team. That Atlas, the MVP of this match. They will go for the turret at the point. At this point, um, the goal difference is now 2k, not a lot, but if you look at that goal, they are all one about 500 goal difference more than all of the blue team. This as the team composition goes on, it will get tougher and tougher, but the red team needs to take advantage of this opportunity when the blue team is, is behind, because if you have the carry to be fed across, uh, across the period of the match, the carry might become uncontrollable and not be able to be contained. Interesting though is that even the carry had a mask and I believe that this is to ensure if the team falls off all team members will be able to gain that goal. So this is one of the way they are trying to keep up with the goal difference, keep up with the experience difference by having all of them have the mask. At, a, at this moment you see that the carry doesn't have the first main item so oh carry just got her first main item so the raid team have to be very wary because the amount of damage that will be dished out at this point by the carry will be massive if they are not careful and allows that to happen can see that the blue team is priming themselves up for that attack waiting for the right moment to strike however the front line of Atlas and Grog is proving too much to handle for the blue team they will be repositioning for that next turtle summoning in three seconds also that turtle might be turning into a lot soon They were unable to defend their middle turret and now the Lord is up. Will the raid team take this opportunity to go for the Lord as they have that map control at the top side? Xbox, does he know what's gonna come for him? Xbox get caught out by the Kufra. Now Hayabusa will go in for the Xbox, follow up by the carry, dealing tons of damage. The Xbox, however, has that revive. Will he still make it out alive? No! The Xbox flickers away. The, oh, they almost made it out. Now the rest of the red team is here. Is the Atlas going to be able to change this game? Because 
The Ella is going to RKO the Bruno who deals too, damage, too much damage and has a double kill at the back line. Nana is left all by herself. As long as the carry is alive, they will leave to see another day. But look at Cho down the back, uh, the bottom lane, trying to push that. And it has swallowed out by the Grok. Will Grok be able to defend this? Yes, Grok will defend this. However, they while they lost two turrets at the bottom lane and while they lost one member, uh, while well, they lost the Xbox, they in turn killed three of the blue members and the Lord. So this is the chance they will power the pressure at this point when you see Grog, uh, when you see the Lord come in. Is this the decider for the game at 10 minute mark? This potentially with Bruno at level 15, higher than all the other members of the blue team. This might be it. Grok goes in, goes down on Nana. Nana is shut down by the <clears throat> Harith over there. Still doing time. Very fortunate though, this is not the Enhanced Lord, so the Lord doesn't jump in and damage the tower or straight away. However, Cho, better be careful, the rest of the raid team is coming for you. Cho finish of, she finishes off the Xbox, but will not make it out alive because the rest of the raid team is there for him. Initiate retreat. Kufra though, will he get caught out by the Grog? Gets blocked over there, but will make it out alive. Bruno! Bruno! Be careful Bruno, you're down at half health. Carry! Taking this opportunity to steal all the jungle creeps that, they can, that she can steal. Will make her way back. Play it safe. The blue, uh, the red team is now on a 6k goal with the Bruno quickly at max cap level. So the opportunity window is starting to close because you can. Oh, wishes got caught out at a point of time. Can he make it out alive? He does make it out alive. He was just a bait over there. Carrie, look at her. Getting ton of damage onto the Bruno. Bruno have to back away. Not able to do any damage back and trade blow for blow as Carrie is able to scare him off away. Right now, you can see for the blue team what they are trying to do. Having that Hayabusa and having that chill push out the lanes to ensure the pressure is off them. This is the their strategy to go forward. But they are very wary of the Atlas. The Atlas has been causing havoc for them in this game. Now the carry is almost caught out. Cho got caught out by the Xbox. Oh no, that's that's that engaged. Oh, there's no follow-up, even though the Kufra caught out three of them. Trio members, but Carry is down at the bottom. Carry is now caught up by the RKO by that Atlas. That is a beautiful play by Atlas once more. That flame shot goes in for that uh, Kufra, but Kufra will be able to leave the CNA because of that revive over there. But without the main damage dealers having to hold another 30 seconds, will this be the end of the game for the blue team? Uh, this is a GG well played, very nice game by the raid team, the Atlas, clearly the MVP for this game. Stay tuned because um, Team 2, you will still be able to take part in our third and fourth placing. You can have a 5 minute breather because for the Team 2 and Team 4, you will be standing by for your next match uh let's have a look at the stats over here yeah right okay so looking at the the stats you can see how bruno is way ahead in terms of the goal difference in terms of the goal difference and the atlas nine assist very nice play by atlas he has been able to reposition and catch the, the carry uh, countless time and the uh, the opponents on, on the blue team countless time with his, his RKO re 
redefining the entire gameplay uh, into the into their into their Bruno into their Xbox dishing out tons of damage, Xbox and Harith doing that burst damage and then Bruno following it up. That is insane uh, play by that. So um, fret not, we will have that our next match going to happen soon. Um, we will have a 20 minute breather at this point of time for team three, uh, team three and I uh, think two and team four to prepare for their third and fourth placing. Meanwhile, if you're joining us, this is our community ready first online edition. We will see you in 20 minutes time. And to then see you.
this is our third and fourth placing match between Team 1, no, Team 2 and Team 4. Yes, that's right, Team 2 and Team 4. They played brilliantly today and they made their ways to the third and fourth placing. We are excited to share more about Scape Esports and Scape Esports is happy to be a platform for youth to explore their aspirations and if they are interested to find out more about esports and the how the industry works, then that is one aspect that Scape is happy to be working with partners, coming out with programs for you guys to be taking part in. So right now we are waiting for the match to start. The match will be starting very soon. We are I'm gonna talk about this point system. So the point system is that throughout the entire season. The season runs for six months. Uh, there will be two windows of redemption for these points where you can collect the points and you can exchange them for prizes. This is collected through the different positionings in our monthly community rallies and also lucky draw in our Discord, lucky draw during the engagement. I'm very excited to bring you the third and fourth placing match. So without further ado, let's move on to the pick and ban. So right now we see on blue team, we have a ban on the Atlas. Atlas, one of the meta tanks this, this tournament because of how well it is able to reposition most of the, the heroes while this time around, the red team decides that they shall ban the carry. Um, in today's matches, we haven't seen a very effective carry throughout the entire community rallies. That's only because of the fact that the opponent teams has been able to counter the carry and 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 make sure that the carry is not able to farm. And this time around, they decide to block the the ban the <clears throat> the claw at the same time Silva. this is Your team interesting because um ling in one of our matches was able to free roam and that led to him being very fat so in this case you see that ling has been open and was picked up immediately by the blue team we shall see how that plays out this time around, we finally get to see a Digi be part of the team composition as Digi has been one of the most banned heroes throughout the entire of our community rallies. Yorena is very good off laner that can double up as a tank. And for the opponent team, we have Grok that is a very popular tank that is able to dish out damage. So they decided to go with the Wen Wen. That's how they pronounce it. I mean, we, I normally call it Wan Wan, but the game actually calls it Wen Wen. So we call it Wen Wen. And uh, for the <laughs> Diggy, for the Diggy, let's let's have a look whether they oh they they ban the Valia. Yep, they banned the Valia, and this is because the Valia has very good disengage. So, based off this team composition, I think they don't really want the opponent team to be able to reposition their Picking. players, their, their players, yeah, their heroes, and not be able to catch them out with heavy CCs. So, understandable why they picked such ban. Because on the on the raid team, you can see how the Grog doesn't the Grog doesn't have any stun. But the Nana comes in. The Nana is if used 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 properly, could be able to prevent the Ling and the Diggy from attempting any of their skills. I'm actually quite curious to find out what would be their main damage dealer on the blue team side because they haven't had a main damage dealer i this will be an interesting pick they had a mantis i don't Martis. think that they locked in the mantis that is an interesting pick wow um 
I want to see how this game pans out. I'm not very sure because usually the meta has been on the hyper carry mode. This time around, they decided not to go for the hyper carry mode. So they will go with a interesting composition though. Yeah, I, I really am curious how this game would pan out because it's not often you see a Matis in this. I believe that they want to build the game around the Ling. Because you got Kufra as the tank, you have Digi as a support, Uranus a tank that's gonna go off lane and Matis is a fighter. They don't have a MM and they don't have a main mage. So they decided to go with a double tank, double fighter composition with a support. Meanwhile, the opponent's team has a 1-1, one -one, which I believe will be the main damage dealer. Nana, very good support because of that polymorph and the stun for the ultimate. Ah, uh, yeah, in the chat, someone no, just no, said that the blue team will be going with a hyper with Uranus and Matis off lane. Blue hyper, blue hyper. Ling hyper, I would, I would assume Ling is the hyper. <clears throat> so this is going to be interesting though. We are off to our third and fourth placing match. Third and fourth placing match. Diggy, not as a support but as a mage. Um, we'll see how this game goes. Hyper carry on the Ling. Hyper carry on the one. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can see where this is going. Thank you all in the chat for explaining to me what's the map, what they are going for for this time round, because uh usually I. I've been watching matches where they are using the marksman as the hyper carry and then the rest is like the tanks doing the their own stuff. But down at the bot lane, beautiful trade of blows between Martis and Alucard. Uranus cutting the lane, same as uh, Silvana. Silvana and Uranus, two lane cutters. It's who can cut the lane better. Oh, but look at that! The damage being dealt out onto the uh, Nana and they weren't able to secure the queue. I was expecting the queue to be secured, but Ling, Ling is just waiting over there for the right moment to jump in. Doesn't reach the Grok. Grok um, moves out just in time for Ling to jump in and get a hit by the turret. Ling goes low. It is likely that Ling might go back, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Ling will continue to farm and wait for the right opportunity to jump in on a Sylvana low on health. Low on health, and that was the first blood to Ling over there. Um, low on health, and then Uranus go in trying to take the tank. Ling burst down that Uranus, uh, that, uh, that Sylvana. Alucard doing Alucard stuff, trying to like scare off. Waiting for the right time, probably want to steal the goal. But then <laughs> see, both of them are just dancing around each other, trying to. Yeah, Matis. Oh, there's an engage over here. Kufra goes in. Ling does double kill. Beautiful play by the Kufra. Initiating, allowing the Ling to go in on them. Ling now on three kills. Ling will... <laughs> Alucard say GG, we fourth. Um, don't give up too early, man. You still have a lot of chance. Don't You still have a lot of time to turn this game around. Again, it goes in on the... Onto the Sylvana. Sylvana has to defend against four people. That's her skills to pull them all in. That makes her live to see another day. Turtle Good play by Sylvana, insane. actually. Being able to get them all in and then trying to pull them back in, allowing them to hit, hit the turret hits. She knows that she's tanky and she is tanky. Initial oh, by over here, LK Flex. Matis almost got caught out by three members of the opponent's team. Aluka at this point in time will just go and take some jungle creeps, farm up some jungle creeps, move away, and re try and reset the game. The game has hasn't been too lopsided yet. It's still pretty balanced, despite Ling having three Qs at the start of the game. That's something that they have to be wary about, cause as 
the game progresses on, Ling will just get more and more dangerous. Ling tries to burst down the Nana, only able to take about one quarter of the health, and then gets blocked by the Grog. They shall move in on the Ling right now. Can they finish off the Ling? No, they are not able to finish off the Ling. Ling able to make it out alive. Diggy down at the bot lane, trying to go for that Alucard. But Alucard is able to survive that. Now they shall move in onto the Martis. Can Martis make it out alive? It's that block on the by the Grog, and then a one-one finishes that off. Beautiful play, catching the Martis off. Now, spotting that the red team is down at the bottom of the map, they shall take the objective on the top. A one-for-one -one trade in that in that sense. If you have the top, the, tur the turtle going to the blue side and one. Go, I want Q going to the red side. It's a reply by the, the blue team. Would the blue team take this opportunity to go for the buffs in the jungle of the red? Ling decides not to spotting out three of the opponents waiting in the red jungle. But this engage might just happen. Ling over here waiting for the moment. Goes in, goes for the 1-1, one -one, goes for the back line. 1-1 one -one uses his armor, blocks it out, almost makes it out alive. But Ling can finish off the 1-1. One -one. Meanwhile, Sylvana at the back end, finish off the Kufra. Now go for your arenas. Ling Ling, uh, Ling Ling, sorry, Ling. <laughs> Ling is caught out at the same time. So that's two for one exchange. Good play by Sylvana. Down at that board lane, Matis versus Alucard. We'll back off. Over here, you have your Diggy versus your Nana able to hold off that wave so that the turret sees another day. That's some wave management for you over there. So, at this point of time, the game is still pretty even. The, both teams are able to trade blows very well. Each time a Q goes down, the opponent team would reply with an objective being secured. Your goal difference at this point is barely... It's not much of a dif difference. Few go, few hundred goal difference. Um, they're quite a good and even match. This is a very tight match between the third and fourth placing. Oh, we see the blue team is deciding to go for that Sylvana. Sylvana being called out by herself. But at the bot lane, they will go for Matis in reply. Matis will make it out alive, but at the top lane, there's no way for Sylvana. Sylvana is not going to be able to make it out alive as uh, four of them. Both teams are mirroring each other as as bo both teams go for the dive at the turret. They go for another turret, goes for the hero Q. It's a one for one turret and Q exchange. But this time around, they will get that turret. Uh, they, they will get a turtle at the bottom. Blue team, relentless. They will not give up. They will go for two turrets knowing that they already lost the turtle. And that is a very good reply. Both teams replying to each other very well. Once a turret goes down, I will take your turret. Once a Q goes down, I'll take a Q. If I can't take a Q, I'll go for the turtle. Why not? Very good play. And why as one turtle goes down, they took another red buff. So both teams are trading blows, blow by blow by blow. And look at that Nana going to get busted down, but of course gonna make it out alive. But Link says, no, you die over there. And then you have your Sylvana finishing off the link, trading one for one blow. This exchange is pretty even. I don't think it is in favor of any, but one one is going to finish off that Kufra. Kufra is going to buy some time for the team, um, for the rest of the team as the rest of the team try to defend the mid lane. Kufra, knowing that he's going to die, decided, you know what, let's just bring the team away so that they take some time to come back to the middle of the lane. The team, the matches now is pretty even. They do not want the blue to go over to the red team. So they try to go in for that blue. It doesn't go the way that they wanted. 1-1 one -one gets that blue. And Uranus will make his way out of that exchange alive. But look at Ling, waiting for 1-1, one -one, going for the 1-1. One -one. Can he get a 1-1? One -one? When, when, I mean, ah, uh, no, Ling is going to make it out. Barely made it out alive because Martis finishes all the person that's chasing after Ling. And then one one when when is gonna be over there waiting for it. Grog low on health. Will they die to Grog? Cause your is high on health. Takes the turret. Will not jump in. They will not overcommit this battle. The goal differences though. Still only a few hundred goal difference. Very close games. In terms of turret exchanges, both lost two turrets e each. And 
Wow, it's it's just fabulous plays by both teams. They are trading everything that they got for each other. Now they move in for that um Silvana, knowing Silvana took down that top turret, they will go for so Silvana is holding on, but that stun comes in by Nana, going to catch the back line and then Kufra goes down. One for one again. Oh, that's not a one for one. That's uh, that's two kills on a raid team. But look at Alucard dealing tons of damage onto Matis and Matis making his way out just in time for Link to go in for the Alucard. Alucard's gonna reply. Alucard knows that he's gonna take this opportunity to fight if the Matis not gonna help. Matis comes in, KS that kill from Link. Link almost got that, and that was a one. That is really blow by blow. That's amazing game. This is a very tight and amazing game by both teams. Go for that objectives, go for that kills, go for that um, turtle. The Lord is going to be up soon and we will see how the game pans out. Raid team priming for the right opportunity to take down the middle turret, the fastest way to the core of the blue team. But they will bite their time as the waves are not crashing in yet. Oh, over there, Kufra got caught out by the Grog, goes down low, get busted by the 1-1. One -one. Uranus though, over there, going down low, Ling going at the back line, still going for in for 1-1, one -one. got the 1-1, one -one. get executed by the Alucard, even though that happens. Nana, despite going down, procs a passive and is able to make it out alive. This game is tight. But the goal differences is going over to the Braid team at this moment. Slowly creeping up is Sylvana. Do they know that Sylvana is there? Of course, the, the Uranus is just going to face check that and open up the map. But they are looking to dive. Will they dive with that Grog? Because the wave is coming in. Diggy pulls that, pulls that back. And then after that, the Kufra wants to prevent the raid from going to the opponent team. Alucard gets that raid. Now they will... They might go for that dive over here at the moment. Grok is in the wrong land. No man's land will make it out alive. They are able to survive that assault. Lord, resurrecting now the you. game is slowly tilting to the side of the red team. As the red team is able to build up more of the objective, control more of the map, invading most, most fights are happening in blue. Uh, side of the map. This also means that most of the time their jungle creeps are being contested and it's not going in the way of the blue team. Red team is being a bit more aggressive at this point. There's nothing much going on. They're just gonna poke each other in the middle of the lane. Gonna say hi, Ling. Spots the Sylvana. Going for the Sylvana. Sylvana tries his best to stay alive, but it got shut down by the Uranus. Uranus so tanky. Couldn't do much. Will the red team take this opportunity to turn the game around? Or will the blue team be able to capitalize on this? The Grog goes up, has that um, wall up. Now they are going for that Grog. Will, they, will the Grog survive? The Grog will not survive. Meanwhile, while the blue team is being distracted, look at Alucard. What is Alucard doing? He's just standing there. Did he AFK? Oh, and... Oh, he... What was Alucard doing? Alucard wasn't paying attention. And... Alucard just got caught out. I thought Alucard was able to down that bottom turret. What happened there? But never mind, red team. Uh, blue team is just going to take that event advantage and going to take uh, down that Alucard. Goal difference is still in the favor of the red team though. Looks like the contest is... Oh, whoa, 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 that's... Some... Initiate retreat. That's... Initiate that's retreat. a bit rude, yeah? Let's not have that around next time. But... Um... So... Back to the game, we will be having the... Red team go against the blue team, the engage over here. Down in the middle of the lane, we will be having a battle that's going on.
they are trying to contest the Lord. At this point of time, the Lord is one of the most important objectives for both teams as they can turn the game around. Grok trying to block out, trying to um, create space for the red team. Securing once again the objectives of the uh, uh, of the blue the blue team's jungle creeps. Grok has started something. Is there a follow up by the red team? But he's all alone as one one is up in their own map. Um, there's no one following up on that initiation by Grok. Grok is probably just buying some time for the. Red team to farm up before they re-engage. Sylvana catches out the uh, the Kufra, but Kufra will just bounce out of that alive. Oh, meanwhile at top, Ling has uh, went for that one one, finishes off that one one. Kufra though is getting caught out, will get slain by the Sylvana. Uranus at the back. Going for the back line together with Ling, supporting Ling all the way, making sure that Ling survives that, taking most of the damage. Cannot finish off the Uranus. Uranus is so tanky at this point of time. They will be chasing down Uranus, trying to uh, burst down Nana, I'm sorry. Uranus is still on the prowl for that Q. Can he get a Q? He will back off and not overcommit at this point. Will they decide to change for the objectives and go for the Lord, they will go for the Lord. Um, meanwhile, Diggy is just there. You can see Grok waiting for the right opportunity. They are hoping that the blue team don't get the Lord. They are spotted out by the blue team. They will be engaged over there. You see Sylvana going in. Will Sylvana get a sling? Finishes off that Lord. Finishes off that Sylvana. Goes for that double kill. Finishes um is being finished off. The Diggy finish off by that Initiate Grok. Retreat. That. Two for one for one exchange together with the Lord. Very nice play by Sylvana. Very uh, brave of her to be going in, but she's not able to secure the Lord. And because of what has happened, they make it out alive with the Lord. Lord going to crash in on the top half of the <coughs> map at this point. Ling is now unstoppable, picking out the different Alucard. Finishing out of the Alucard as uh, the match carries on. So now you have the raid team trying to defend the top while the raid team is distracted defending the top. The middle turret is gonna go down as the blue team looks to capitalize and break open the map. As the match moves on and if the raid team didn't finish off the blue team, it might just fall in the favor of the blue team as Link continues to get more and more dangerous, more and more damage being able to be output by it. We will see how this game goes then. So right now it seems as if the tide is back even again. Back to 49k go on each side, 5 turret down and 1 lord secured by the blue team. Blue team will not Overcommit will not want to overcommit because they are wary of Sylvana and 1 1. So they are always trying to pick out Sylvana and 1 1. You can see that the way they are moving, though, they are having their team speed up, having the main bulk of their teammates in front, while the back line they are just waiting for the right moment to go in on them. Over here, the team is stuck. You can see, um, Ling will not be able to jump in when there's like so many people stuck together. He doesn't want, he's not able, oh, and 1-1 one, one finish off the Diggy. Is there going to be a follow-up as Ling goes in trying to finish off the 1-1, um, one, one, finishes off the 1-1, one, one, but gets shut down by the Grog. And then the Grog is on a killing spree. Will they take that advantage? Will they take that chance as Alucard goes and um, goes for the top? Alucard finishes off the Kufa, the Kufa will come back live. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is in the middle of the lane, trying to push their lane Initiate down retreat. before the revival of the Ling and before the revival of the Diggy. Will they be able to take down that first turret? They will attempt to go for that turret with only one minion alive. No, they will move away from that turret. They will not overcome it. This game is on a knife's edge. Sylvana being caught out will be engaged by the Kufra. 
but the damage dealers are not out yet. Just five more seconds before the dangerous Ling comes out. Uranus is by himself. Will Uranus do... If you able to do anything over there, Uranus sees the opportunity to go in on the Alucard. Alucard flakers out. That's a... No, Alucard was able to make it out alive, fortunately for him. So, now the match is back. Um, pretty even. One major team fight and everything could tip the balance of into any of the teams. Lord resurrecting soon. Also, with Lord up right now, there could be a um, chance for them to take dominance and, and uh, uh, display dominance at the top side of the map. This is the key objective for this round. They will... Oh, and Kufra slain the Alucard. And now this is followed by Sylvana. Sylvana going in. Oh, he couldn't flick, but he got blocked by the Croc. Right now, Kufra goes down low. Uranus and Ling and Diggy still alive. Will they want to take the fight and turn the fight around? They are out of position. They will not take the fight. They want to capitalize when the Croc, uh, when the Lord is being engaged. That's what I am thinking. They will wait for the right moment. They don't know where Uranus is. Uranus is just waiting over there. Uranus is saying hi over there. Will, will, will Uranus come in and steal the Lord in the last minute? We will know. At least we know that the bottom, uh, the, the middle two, they are... Oh, Uranus goes out! Uranus is going in with his, with his shield. Will, will Uranus be able to get the execute? Oh no! Lord has been slain by the raid team. And Uranus is able to make it out alive. <clears throat> this is this could have been a decisive battle. This could have been the decisive objective for the raid team. And now the Lord will proceed on to attack the bottom lane. Without their Ling alive, will they be able to defend this? Okay, there's a battle over here. Sylvana misses her, her attack, not able to pull in the rest of the team. <gasps> wow, the amount of damage being put out. What, are they able to secure a kill at this point of time? They are not, but a lot has already broken through the bottom of the lane. Deals ton of damage onto the blue team. The blue team can't defend a lot. The towers, the core is going down. Monster Q by Croc. Is this a GG well played by the raid team? Raid team goes in Ling. Is he the savior? He's not the savior. It's win win. Finishes of Ling. Finishes of finishes of the core. GG well played by the raid team. And this is a good battle. As much as this is a very good battle, there's one thing I want to emphasize is that in community rallies, we do not encourage toxic behavior and what happened there we do not condone in very well so we have give we will be giving a first warning to our uh, alucard because of the fact that we do not um appreciate and we do not condone such behavior in community rallies anyway back to this we will be talking about the stats and the stats here Shows that it's a pretty close game. It is, in fact, a very close game, and I am happy that um, this was a very exciting game for both sides. Without further ado, we will have a look at this matchup. That'll be all for this. We will be proceeding for our final match of the day. So, Team 1 and Team 3, get ready because the finals will be the best of three so i will see you in 15 minutes and let's watch that final see you
been going off a broke for my friends to like me oh but i know they see right through me cause they listen to my songs yeah but i don't care no baby i don't care people always tell me take a breath Something that haunts me all night I've been staying up hours until the sun rises Just so casual Hi guys, welcome back to our finals of our April online community rallies. Very glad that you guys are back and you guys hang with us throughout the entire day. My name is Wenseless. I'm the head of communities at Scape Esports. At Scape, we are all about coming of youth development we are all about youth aspirations we are all about supporting their interests and in this case we are allowing the youths to explore more about the esports industry through our various programs so the first program that we have of course right now is the community rallies where we allow our, where we have our youths coming in and for them they are exploring different aspects of a community and learning about their first step going into uh, esports. But without further ado, let us bring you back to the take of the action where we are having our finals of today and that will be Team 1 versus Team 3. This is a best of three match against uh, each other and we hope that we will be able to see a fantastic display by both teams as they look to fight for the top points for this edition of community rallies your team is picking so Uranus. off to the chat uh, off to the band and pick team one was the team that went on a rampage with the link so with that being noticed, this is where you see that the uh, raid team has decided to ban ban out the link. They don't want the link to go over to the hands of the blue team, and as such, the blue team decides like, "Hey, why not I pick up the Urena since it's open, and well, let's go for the Digi as well." So Atlas, Atlas has been the star MVP tank the entire day, which is quite an amazing thing right because the way that it's been able to reposition teams been able to disrupt uh, the attacks from opponent teams and also initiate attacks Atlas is probably one of the best tanks in the current meta game so it's pretty interesting to see that Atlas is not banned but on the blue team they decided to, uh, to go with um, Estes, which is a very good healer, which has very good Q in terms of CC, in terms of the slows. Your team is banned. Now the Fasa is uh, open. With the Fasa open, it can do quite a lot of long range damage. So I, I would assume that the Fasa is going to play a supporting role in this. Probably going to take up Mask as well. Following the Your carry until she's about level team. 4 and the level 4 carry will be tagged along with the Atlas throughout the entire game. Now we're going to be having a look at the bans. They decided to ban Leomod and ban Kimi. This is the first ban of each character throughout the entire day. So it's quite interesting for them to be picking a non popular uh, heroes to ban. Cho. Now we have the Cho going in onto the raid team. <clears throat> sorry. Yep, sorry. Lancelot is being picked. They are still deciding on the MM. They haven't chosen an MM. Diggy is probably going to play as a mage support. Hanzo. Your team. Hanzo and Lancelot is the two that they decided to pick, which means that the carry in this case would be the Lancelot. <clears throat> 
I would assume. The hyper carry will be Lancelot, and your da main damage dealers will be your Hanzo and your Venus. The Resla is an interesting choice too, because the Resla has a knock up, has quite a big range. Would they lock in the Resla though? Considering that how they were playing a two tank kind of. Oh, they do. They are going in for that. So that is interesting. Um, we will be having quite a uh, interesting lineup on this end now as <clears throat> both teams are looking to secure the champion of this edition of the community rallies. So if you are joining us today, welcome. This is our very first online community rally. We are all about youth aspirations and we are allowing we are coming up with programs for you, you to be engaged. If you're excited to be part of the esports community or if you're excited to um step into the esports world, do look out for skate programs as we look to equip you with such skills and allow you to be able to find out more about esports. Welcome to Mobile Legends. And now we shall kickstart our very Seconds last set of the matches. Smash the match. finals of today's All community rallies. It will be against Team 1 against Team Three, who will win? So if you're in the chat and you've been following us, we have a pause at the moment. I think there's a issue going on in the chat. So we will have a slight technical pause. And there might be some issues that will happen. Anyway, while this is happening, well, I will tell you guys more about what Scape has uh, in line this year. So we are coming up with more esports programs online for you guys to be engaged from your safe, uh, from the comfort of your homes. But other than that, we are also having a lot of different kind of program where you can come down once this COVID situation ends can come down learn more from local professionals we will be working with local teams that are able to um, give you more insight and perhaps even be your mentors for some of these games if you're interested in we are also looking to work with the various esports gaming community communities around Singapore bring them together and working and working and curating programs with them so that you guys can benefit and have a esports community to be part of we will be resuming the stream in one second and we are back to the game there was a slight mid, um, error or technical error and we shall <clears throat> see how this pans out so in the early part you have your carry going for her usual rate buff everything at this point is a very slow game um both teams will not go for an aggressive play style they decided to go with the safe route however if you're looking at the map they might want to catch that blue team down in the middle of the lane there's some action going on first blood goes to atlas as atlas is able to pull the diggy out of position and the rest of the team were able to jump in on them fasa has a stun uh atlas has the cc in terms of the pool so that's a very strong combo of cc's that might be dished out by the red team allowing the uh, carry to rotate safely and chance pounce upon any of the opponent that is by themselves the first blood goes to the raid team and that is quite an advantage for them at the start 
Now in the top lane, they are going to go for the choke. Choke flickers out, tries to go for the kick, misses that, and that's the reply by the blue team as they are able to take the choke out. But meanwhile, while the blue team is focused on the top, the red team decided to deal damage to their turret, bringing it, bringing it down to about a quarter of health left. And this is another exciting game with both teams trading blow for blow, going for the opportunity when one, uh, when they spot out that the opponent is at which part of the map. Do they see the Lancelot? Lancelot going for backline, going for the carry, but now Atlas going down low. Will Uranus go after the Atlas? Uranus executes the uh, Atlas. Will make it out alive with that one Q. Will go back, be that mid. Shoe for the rest of the team, and they shall disengage from that 1 0. Lancelot, though, being a nuisance in the jungle, will Lancelot be able to take the red buff? No, but Fasa, Fasa is about to deal damage onto the uh, blue team, but Lancelot finishes off the carry, no more damage coming out from the red team, and then followed by the Diggy dealing tons of damage onto the Cho. Lancelot. Being a nuisance, being able to pick up, uh, being able to prevent the red buff going to the red team, and at the same time, the blue team was able to pick up two kills. Very in a beautiful play by the blue team. Once again, catching them out, will the Atlas be able to make it out alive? But Fasa going in with the ultimate, the feather strikes. However, um, the blue team was able to jump out of that range, and they are safe from that engage of the Fasa. This match is now leaning slightly over to the blue team. Over there, they are being a nuisance at the top, not allowing Cho to farm. Cho is all alone having to face three opponents who's establishing top control of the map. But while the top control is happening down at the bottom lane, they are trying to spot out the any of the blue team. They take down one turret. However, the top side, you see how Cho is left all alone to face against three opponents who, at this point of time, do not know where the raid team is. And the raid team will go in for the flank, but Lancelot is well fed at this point of time. Level 8, carry is being caught out. Will not be able to make it out alive. Finished off by the Estes. And now Fasa trying to deal damage, trying to keep them away. But Fasa got caught out by the Uranus. And then Hanzo finishes them off. Followed by a Lancelot Q, which got, which the Lancelot got caught by the turret, and it's just again blow by blow by blow, but leaning in the favor of the blue team who got three, three kills out of that, two kills out of that in exchange for one. But as that happens, the pressure is mounting. More pressure is going in onto the red team. Will the red team be able to turn this pressure around? As now their map is open their jungle is not as protected as it used to be will they still be able to turn this for this 3k deficit and the experience deficit uh, around uranus all alone against five people can uranus make out of this alive probably not but while they go for that red buff the blue team decides like hey we will get that turtle and we will have some of our star bombs over there waiting for your blue buff to come up which they might want to contest for Hans over there being a nuisance jumping straight for the back line jumping straight for that uh, Fasa Fasa now with the feather strike not hitting anybody however that opens up the space for them to secure the uh, blue buff Aluka uh, sorry um, Cho meanwhile Takes the opportunity, pushes out the lanes, shall head back after that push at the top lane. Goal difference at this point of time is closing uh, to 2k. It was about 3 to 4k earlier on. Red team is taking this opportunity to take down turrets, push out the lanes, able to secure their jungle creeps, which allows them to have more of that. Oh, and that stun goes in straight on the Asters. Can they finish off the Asters? Fasa sees that there are four of the red of the blue team members going in on her decide to fly out. Cho knows that he can make out make out of this alive. 
goes and engage them, holds them on, but Uranus is able to finish off the, the carry, and then Atlas tries to throw them back in. Can the red team survive? His red team ultimate goes in. However, that Lancelot is unstoppable at this point of time, finishing off the entire of the red team, and is able to take a full team wipe at this point. So just note that this is the best of three game and at the moment the blue team is taking that advantage. Can Atlas do his? Okay, oh he got stunned. He's not able to pull off that pull. However, Terisla pulling the Uranus, that's not working out very well for him as the Uranus is a mid tank. Cho trying to go in for the Diggy, not being able to pick out any of the main damage dealers. How? Blue team is just stacking that pressure. Look at the mouth damage that Lancelot is, is putting. However, got stunned at a point of time by Fasa. Very beautiful stun. Able to finish off the Lancelot, but Len not before Lancelot takes out the carry and the Teresla. This is not looking good for the red team. You can see that um, the Cho is all by himself. Not able to get the support by the Fasa. Not able to get the support by Atlas. They will take this opportunity to let the waves come in. Fasa stuns the Uranus. Can the damage go down the Uranus? But Uranus is just so tanky at this point of time. At this moment, Red Team is hanging on to their dear life as the amount of damage going out by each individual heroes by the Blue Team is just so massive. There's 9k goal lead. It's quite an uphill battle for the Red Team. Over here, you see the Cho get pulled back by the Diggy. Diggy plants the bomb. Will the bomb go to Cho? It's chasing him the Cho. Will Cho get damaged? Will Cho be able to intercept that? Thankfully, Atlas was able to pull that away. And now Hanzo being able to be away from his body. The RKO goes in. Not able to be, be followed up by the Fasa fast enough for them to get damaged. They make it out of life. Make it out. Make out of that alive. Esther's jump. Oh, Lancelot just jumping in, being a nuisance. That amount of damage going on to Teresla. Teresla has no choice but try to salvage something out of that. Fasa making sure that they can't keep that pressure going in on to them while the mid turret is being damaged, being taken down. Blue team is being relentless here, not giving any space for the red team to win. Is the red team able to stay out of this life? Red team goes in, jump. Atlas finally got the RKO world. Fasa for. Fasa gets a double kill. Can I get a triple kill on the Lancelot? Finish off the triple kill. That's a maniac. Cause he got all four kills. Can they push out of this with a 30 second counter? This is. This could be the turnaround for the red team if they are able to secure the lot within this 30 seconds with only one member of the blue team alive. They are defending the lot. Preventing Hanzo to reach the Lord with their dear life. Can Hanzo steal the Lord away from them? This is not the enhanced Lord by mind you. That's why Cho is out there looking for the body of Hanzo. But now Digi is up. The rest of the team is up. They have not much. They have secured the Lord. They will reassemble now and take that chance to turn this game around. However, at this point of time, now the team has caught out the Lord. This could be the deciding battle of the game. Fasa are not part of the team at the moment. They will not want to engage without her damage coming in from behind. Lancelot still dealing ton of damage. Lancelot waiting at the right side of the map, waiting for the right moment. Lancelot now is going back line. Turns out, decided not to go in, not it's too much of a risk for him. And then Hanzo goes in. Over there, Lancelot going for the kill, going on the carry. Now the Fasa is at danger. Chased down by Lancelot. The damage dealers are, are away from the tanks. The tanks are not able to do damage, are not able to stay alive. Lancelot with that double kill. Very nice play by Lancelot. Going for the back line, going for the main damage dealers. Fasa is going down low. Fasa got shut down by Hanzo. Han this is going to be a GG well played. The first game goes to Team 1 at the moment. This was not 
an easy game to watch as the pressure was um, piling on to Team 3. Team 3 almost made a comeback at that point when they were able to almost do a complete wipe and go for the Lord. But because the game was still so early, the respawn was only about 30 seconds. So that was quite a tough game, quite a nice game. Can Team 3 make it back alive? Do a reverse sweep on this uh, best of three series. We will find out. So, um, if you're joining us, this is our final. This is the best of three for our community rallies. We will be headed for five minutes break, giving the teams some time to rearrange the lobby and be back. So, come back in five minutes and we will see you for our second of three rounds. Will Team 1 be the champions of this community rallies? See you guys. Always living the same life I don't really mind But I just need to take some time to get away Is there something I could take for this pain to go away? Cause I've tried a hundred methods and they always seem to fail. Am I crazy? Don't tell me I'm crazy. I just need to find another way. Hey, hey, hey. I've been looking for something that haunts me all night. I've been staying up hours until the sunrise. Just so casual, always living the same life. I don't really mind. To take some time to get away Take some time to get away.
Hi, welcome back. That was an exciting first match by Team 1 and Team 3. And the winner of the Team 1 is, of course, I'm uh, sorry, the winner of the first round is Team 1. That was quite an exciting match. And we will be having our second round of three matches going down right now. Can Team 3 turn this game around? We shall see whether this game can be turned around if you're joining us for the very first time and you're just in time this is our finals and we are running our community mobile legends community rallies today and this is our very first online community rallies which we uh, create a platform for you to be part of that community rallies mm -hmm. so we shall now head over to the pick and ban phase for the Second of BO3 match between Team 1 and Team Team 3. Alright, so over here we see on Raymond uh, on the blue team they decided to go with the first with the first band of Silvana. And Ray team sees that the trial is quite a nuisance in the previous game, I think that's why they're deciding to ban the Cho. As much as the Cho was being ganked on several times, um, he was quite a tough and irritating hero that was causing some grievances, some some issues with um, the, the rank team. So perhaps that's why they decided to go with that Cho ban. Selina has is probably the most banned character in this whole community rallies. Um, there's only once that she was left open, and clearly everybody doesn't want to play against Selena. Selena is probably one of the most annoying characters to have on your opponent's team. Red side decided, hey, you know what? You've been playing your Atlas so well. Let's ban it. We're not going to give you your Atlas anymore. So what will be the reply? They'll go with their Grog. Blue team seems to be filled with t uh, players that are good in tank characters. And oh, they decided to up the value. And for the first time in community rallies today, we will be seeing a Claude being picked. This is one of the most um, OP character I would say in the game right now. Other than out of the, all the marksmen, the top three at, a, at my in my own, own opinion will be Carrie, Claude, and Bruno in the right hands, of course. And in this case, we see a Valia going up, of course, trying to push away people. Jawhead very good at throwing people. Are they gonna lock in the diggy? They have locked in the diggy, which was what is causing. A bit of pain for their team the previous game. So with the Uranus picked, will they go for the Kufra? It's likely they will go for the Kufra. Oh, will they go for the Grog or the Kufra? The Claude at this point of time would want to have some someone that's able to create space because the moment he goes in with his ultimate he's able to flicker out um when he has his clone to where his clone is so it's very mobile for claude but it's better if all of them are stuck together if all of the members are near each other team is picking and oh a mia ben your team oh, that's. Hmm. Why? Why did they ban Amiya? We will see who they pick instead for the blue team. The composition now, though, it's pretty decent. If they pick the Bruno, I can see that the stun might go in. Oh, a Nana and Diggy combo. That is something that can create a lot of space and keep the opponent far away from each other because both of them have um, positional control. Both of them are able to plant what I call bombs. Are able to... Fanny. Oh, Fanny. If, uh, if we had our community 
guy called Escher here, he would love to see this Fanny being played out. Wonder if he is watching right now. So this is our second game of our three games. Our, our best of three. We will be having our team one versus team three. Team three is on the blue team and team one on the red team. Team one is currently one. One up at the moment. One up. If you're joining us right now, this is our finals of our community. Ready, Scape Esports is proud to present to you this community, this Mobile Legends community. If you're interested in being part of the community, do uh, join our Discord, do join our Telegram, do follow us on Twitch. There will be more programs that will be coming up over the course of the year for you to be part of that you can learn more about esports be better at your be better at your game skills for example and yeah pretty much we will be studying the game right now so this is the pinnacle of a best of three i would say one of the pinnacle because we would want to see best we want to see best of three, right? We want to see all three matches played out, right? So, you know, why not? Why not there be competition here? Why not let the the team battle it out, have a good game, and we will have a fantastic uh, third game later on. Fanny has gone for that... Um, Blue it going for a different route is going for the clearing of the wave first and then after that the clearing of the health bug over there before heading to the blue buff. So that is a very different route on the Fanny. The Fanny needs the blue buff so can see how important it is as it's able to cool down his skills. But the damage going down onto the Grog first blood goes to the blue team. Fanny wasn't able to do anything at a point of time. Only can stand there and watch as the first blood goes over the blue team. Will blue team be able to take advantage of this? Oh, over that top lane though. The top lane has uh, Grok uh, going in. All of them going in onto the Claude. The Diggy pulls the Claude back. And then after that, Claude is able to get out of that alive using his flicker. They will want to converge in on the top of the map. I think they will go for that first turret queue. They went for the dive over there. Bruno goes with that dive. Got finished, Grog got finished off by Nana. Can they finish off the Claude? Claude goes to the other side, gets stuck in between the lanes, and then gets bombed by that Diggy. Now, they are looking for more blood as they scour the jungle of the raid team. Great play at the top half of the map. You have Diggy and Nana is just being such brilliant support, dealing tons of damage and having good CC on oh, over there. The Fanny is looking for the right opportunity. Fanny is going to go in, gets blocked, gets the Diggy countering that. Fire. Fanny, Fanny kills off the Nana and is not able. Eh? Kills off the Valia, sorry. Kills off the Valia and then almost get uh, knocked out by the. Uh, Bruno, but couldn't make it up, but was able to make it out alive. Fanny got his first Q. Is he able to get more? Fanny, there, looking for blood, level 5. Looking to see if anybody can get caught out by her. Blue team sticking very close to one another, making sure that they are able to protect their, their main damage dealer. But oh, this Estus and Uranus combo though, just look at it. It's so tanky. As Uranus is really good at regen and then Estus is there healing him. Oh, what more can you ask for being the front two? But at the top lane, Claude looks at the opportunity going for the Nana. Does the Nana has a uh, passive though? Fanny though, almost get knocked by, knocked by the jaw hit. Can she finished off the joy hit. Joy hit with a slid out of health. Couldn't make it out alive because the minion was able to finish off more hit on 
And Jawhead goes down the Fanny. That's two kills, one for one over there. Grog goes in, goes for the backline, goes for the Bruno. Bruno is caught by the Grog. Will the damage come in by them? It's gonna get pulled back. Valor finishes off the Grog. Grog, uh, Uranus is gonna go out of that alive. Claude is just there waiting for the right moment. Believe he has his ultimate, but his low on health will not risk that. So down back to mid lane where all the action is. Fanny is going around, waiting for the right opportunity to pick people out. The turrets are still up. The goal difference is close. Fanny is going to get locked by the jaw hit. They are going to converge on the Fanny, not allowing Fanny to do much. But down at oh, they are going to finish off the Fanny. Will they be able to finish off the Fanny? Fanny goes out of that, but the rest of the red team sees what is happening, going down for the bottom path of the map, going to see if they can capitalize on that Bruno. Bruno, no, not a lot of mana left. Almost got blocked by that Grok over there. Makes it out of life. They shall disengage at this point of time as Fanny is back to full health. And Fanny can come any time to just burst down that Bruno. Down in the middle lane, you see the four, the five members of the raid team converging, waiting for the right opportunity to go in onto the players in the mid lane. But they have no minion waves to help them, so they shall disengage. And both of the teams are going for their respective buffs in their jungle. The red buff and the blue buff up for grabs at the moment. This this match is pretty even. Um, oh, the Grog going in for the dive. And then the Fanny finishes off the jaw hit, but the Grog got caught out of position. Gets finished off by the Bruno, who is supported by Velia and the Diggy over there. Do they know who is waiting for them in the middle of, uh, in the bush? They don't. They are just pushing. Oh, Fanny points out, misses her hook. Is being pulled back. Won't get finished off by the Bruno over there. That was a bad play by Fanny over there. Misses her, her ropes. And as such, the bottom tower goes down. Bottom turret goes down for the raid team, but the raid team will take the, the chance to finish off the turtle on top, changing, ex changing, chase, changing objectives. And then Jawhead saw, saw the opportunity, wanted to go in for the engage, misses the engage, and then Nana over here healing herself, going to be able to, not going to be able to get out of that alive as there's a double Q at the top half of the map after securing the turtle. Again, this match is very close as both teams are able to trade blow for blow and take down uh, take down objectives throughout the entire map. They are not just blindly killing each other, they are only going for objectives and making kills that are important. As the top turret goes down as Uranus buys some time for the top half of the map for the Claude and the Grok to down the turret. We see at the bot lane, they shall go down for the bottom turret at the same time, taking down two turrets. Uh, while losing Uranus, <coughs> while losing Uranus at the top half, good exchange by the red team. Looking at their goal difference, it is still very tight. Um, both teams are close to the goal, and I believe that the, in terms of the items, some of the characters have gotten their first. Uh, first item up. Fanny now going in for the opportunity sees, but will get pulled back by the the diggy finishes off the diggy finds the diggy uh, an issue. Um, now finishes off the <laughs> Nana, able to dodge all the skills from the, from them, but in return loses the Estes as Estes gets caught out by the Bruno and the Valier. Meanwhile, <laughs> diggy is just saying hi to the. Uh, Claude and the Grog down in the top lane. Fanny is being very dangerous at this point of time with 5 Qs, but Bruno... Bruno is now being caught out by the Fanny, but can burst down the Fanny. Double kill for the Bruno. Ah, uh, the Claude going in for his ultimate. Can get 1, can get 2, get 2 Qs, but... And is able to make it out alive at the expense of one... At the expense of their Grog. Can the red team... Uh, continue to turn this game around. Looks like it's a close fight. Um, blue team is dominating. Not by much, to be honest. Both team has two turret down. Both teams are close on goal difference. 
perhaps uh, when we look at the individual characters, uh, individual heroes, and see what their item is and their goal is, we might have a better understanding of uh, where the farm is going to. Not much action at the moment, but the blue team will secure their blue buff, giving it to the Bruno where their main damage is going. W will they be able to catch out that Bruno, uh, that Uranus over Uranus? Transform, got stopped, and then God goes in with an ultimate bite, gets shut down by Bruno. Bruno goes in for a Q at the top. Will we, Bruno get that Q? Will Bruno make it out alive? Valia finishes that off. That's 3 4 0 at that top half of the map, but they have not much objectives over there to clear, so we don't know whether there's any opportunity for them to push further after having 3 kills at that top half of the map while Fanny continues to push the lane at the bot side of the map. Now the goalie is slowly starting to lean over to starting to lean over to the blue team. Will the blue team be able to turn uh will the red team be able to turn this two go two K goal deficit around? The map is quite it's not exactly balance, balancing on the knife's edge. This time around is leaning more to the blue team. And the blue team decided like, hey, we will burst down the Uranus with all our mage spells down the next turret. Proceed to go for the Fanny now. Wants to go for the back line. Knows that he's not going to risk it. Will be jumping around. Will get caught out by the Bruno. Godlike over there. Will they be able to take this turret down as the minion waves crashes into the bot turret? This is the the blue team's reply to the first loss. So, is are they able to finish the game right now? If they finish this game right now, it will be a 1v1 and we will proceed to a third game. Legendary. Right now, they are allowing the minions wave to crash in. Uranus trying to defend the turret over there. Finishes off the Bruno. Knows that he can still survive this. Maybe not. Bruno up. Uh, the Digi is able to burst him down. Over there, Grog trying to defend the turret. The turret is going down low. Will Grog go in with the ultimate? God is burst down immediately while the ultimate goes in. Can the turret stay alive? Can they defend the turret? The turret has been knocked down by the Digi. Fantastic game over there. That's 1v1. This game is now... Now we are going to go for our final match in 5 minutes time. We will look at this over here. You see that the Fanny, um, though he was doing quite well at, this, at the start of the game going on, he wasn't able to reply because the Bruno was able to get his item and then after that at level 15, that's where the damage comes in. That's where the hyper carry is able to just continue snowballing together with all the mages. And with that, that is our very first, uh, that's our second game out of three. Thank you for staying in and watching tuning in with us and watching throughout the entire day. We will be taking a five minutes break. While that happens, um, go for a toilet break, come back, and we will be watching our final match that will be against Team 1 and Team 3. Thank you guys. See you in 5 minutes.
Welcome back. That was an epic second match that we had over there that went in the favor of Team 3. So now it is going to be our final, last and final match. Are you guys excited? Because I am very excited for the last match. The pinnacle of our escape community rallies is a one, is the down to this final selection between Team 3 and Team 1. Previous game, Team 3 won. Having replied to Team 1, will Team 3 be able to make it two consecutive wins? Or will Team 1 snatch it in the last minute? We have gone through seven games today, and this will be our final set of games. We will be starting the game in about 30 seconds, and we are extremely excited for it to take place. If you're joining us, this is the final of Community Rallies, where Community Rallies is a community meetup for the MLBB community held at Scape for the youths to be able to be part of a community and have opportunities to volunteer, have opportunities to learn new skills related to esports. Scape Esports is also proud to be um, coming out with programs for youths so that you guys are able to find out more about the esports industry, are able to be a competitive player so on so forth. Now, we will switch over to our pick and ban. Right now, we see that Team 1, Team 1 decided to ban Atlas and ban Grog, knowing that the red team is a team filled of tank players. Meanwhile, the red team, which is Team 3, decided to go with a different ban this time around. Well, we'll be banning Diggy, we'll be banning Sylvana, we will be interested to see whether what tanks they are going to play because um, we do know that most of their players in the raid team are tank-centric, tank-focused players. Taking out two of the popular tanks in the game, will they be securing whatever tank is left over? They decided to go with Valia, decided to go with Uranus. Both very good pushers. They might want to do split, uh, split pushing. And then you have Leomon and Estes being picked up by the blue team. I am always very excited to see the, the team selection by the blue team because they have been coming up with um, very interesting picks, very interesting composition, not just going for what is popular, but I believe that this is what they are good in. This is um, good strength that they are doing. That's right. So, um, we will see who. Oh, the Cho is open. I totally forgot about the Cho. The raid team do have a good Cho player. I can't remember who, but with the Cho open, they decided like, hey, why not for that? And in reply to that, we the blue team decided, you know what? Let's let's just ban Bruno. You're not gonna get Bruno. You're not gonna get your marksman. They probably oh, and the link is open though. Will they go for the link though? Oh, don't leave me hanging. So, um, there are a few ways that they can go about it, right? They can, for another marksman, or marksman is like the lowest, uh, the lowest um priority in this in this case. Nana, Nana will be the one that they pick. They... Oh, the link! It goes over to team one. Just a little recap, in the first picking. game of Team 1, Ling was able to farm for free. I meant for free. He was able to be 4 levels higher than all the players in the game at the 5 minute mark, 5-6 minute mark. And as such, he was able to get all, their, all his items early and it just snowballed towards the end. Will the red team, will team 3 have an answer to the blue team's link? We shall find out in about 30 seconds when this match starts. We will have a look at their skills though. There's two jungle execute skills there. There's the, the hues coming out by the red team. Uh, and the mana refresh. So that'll be... 
I would still think that they will play a very safe game. They won't go for that engage in the early game, won't go for those early game steals. But the Ling will be on a prowl to take up whatever jungle creeps you leave open for him. That also means that the jungler in this case for the, the off laner and the jungler would have to protect their jungle well. If not, Ling will be happily feeding off whatever you give to him. Once again, this is the final game of... <clears throat> This is the final game of our community rallies. This is the best of three versus team one and team three. Do vote for your favorite. Uh, do tell us who you think will win this final game in the chat. Uh, we are there. We can we will still talk to you and stuff like that. So, Joe, early game getting damaged by the carry, will make his way out of that alive. And Nana is left alone to defend against Leomont. Will Nana be able to hold the lane against Lil Mod considering how much Lil Mod can deal to her? Just the, the damage alone will be quite a nuisance. Over down. As you can see, Ling is, is just gonna be jumping around the map. If you pay attention to your map, Ling will be just jumping around, looking for the right moment, looking for a time where there's nobody at that. Uh, part of the map, he'll go in, invade the jungle, steal the buffs, go for the buffs. But your gonna not not gonna give Ling a good time. Just gonna be there, trading blows with Ling, trying to deal some damage to Ling. Uranus going down low. Will Uranus be able to survive that? Uranus pops the heal. Oh, but there's Cho. Cho will say hi to Ling. Both of them will say hi to each other. Not being able to damage the Ling as Ling is just standing there on the fence, <clears throat> saying hi, looking from the top. But God already have that ultimate. Will do some damage early on, and that will not prove to be a pain for the blue team as the blue team continues to powder pressure. Uranus will take a uh, shelter though at underneath the turret. Even though Uranus has high heal gen, Uranus will not be able to um, do much damage to Ling. Ling is able to face the the. The Uranus out. You can see that Ling already decided to f to go in for that jungle and then having a better one on one. But down in the bot lane, is that being caught out over there? Uh, almost, almost made it out. Minotaur almost being knocked out, but Lumot will go in at this moment. Claude going in with the ultimate doesn't get it. Minotaur following it up. Will they get, pick off a hero? They will go for Lil Mott. Lil Mott is being sustained by the Estes. Estes keeping the team alive, turning the game around, going down for that. Nana, no, Nana no, 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 will get proc. No one will come out of. The, uh, no one will die out of this exchange. But all of them have used up their skills, used up their passive, used up their um, <clears throat> skills. Will this be costly though? Now both of them are down low on health. They will disengage. The first kill didn't happen. That was such a good exchange at that bottom lane as both teams are sustaining, are using up their ultimate, are able to poke at one another and somehow no one dies out of that exchange. Amazing play down the bottom lane. Down at the top, it's just Ling and Uranus having a fun time tagging each other, playing tag, but as, the, as Uranus uh, gets more experience and levels up even more your inners would be able to gain more experience and look at that link link your inners is just there tagging right just not not allowing not allowing the uranus to <laughs> go for sorry i'm <clears throat> sorry anyway we're right now to the middle of the map the tur the turtle is being stolen by the red team while the blue team was engaging and the first blood will go down onto that cho by the Lil Mod. will they take this chance to fall down and fall onto that uh, red team over there because of the fact that that one turtle for one hero i think is a good exchange i think the first blood going to the red team um is okay it's not too bad because you can see this time now, Ling doesn't have that, that opportunity to just freely roam around the map and farm whatever he wants to farm, whatever he wants to farm because Uranus is at the top lane going to put that pressure, keep the wave going in. But Cho now going to take his revenge, going for the back line, going, trying to see if he can do anything. Now they're going to uh, focus down on Cho, 
carry, not much mana left, can carry go in on that Cho. No, he's not going to be able to make that, uh, make that Q on that Cho, but uh, down in the middle lane, the Cho is going to be step onto that Link. Will the Link uh, proc his ultimate and go for that Cho finish off that Q? No, he will not go for that Q, and he will still secure that jungle creeps that's happening. Meanwhile, we can see why uh, Uranus was picked at, at the top, <laughs> because clearly that's his job, right? To push that turret, not allowing Link to go wherever he wants to go. The Cho kicks the Nana, uh, kicks the Minotaur into the uh, turret, able to secure that Q, but Leomon is there waiting for Cho. Will Leomon be able to do something about it? Leomon gets knocked out. The rest of the team is gonna jump in on Leomon. Esther can't keep Leomon alive for any longer, and Terry comes late to the party. Meanwhile, you can see that Uranus is pushing the top lane, making sure that the turret goes down, putting pressure on the top and bottom lane, while Ling is trying to fly by getting the turret in the middle lane. To no avail. Yep, to no avail as the turret is still up and running for the red team. Very balanced game. Um, all of the members are not going in for minus fight. This is a very tough and even game. I actually enjoying this fight, this match a lot. You can see how the team know of each other's strengths and weaknesses and are working around their weaknesses and strengths. Down at the middle, you see that the turtle is being slain by the Ling. This time around, that was a good... Um, Map Dominus. Oh, the they are bursting down that Uranus. Uranus is not gonna uh, go and join the battle in the mid. He's just pulling away the two damage dealers, hoping that the bot in the middle lane they're able to get something off it. And Ling is gonna go for the choke. Can Cho turn this game around? Can Cho get? There is one for one at top side. Cho knows that he, he can't uh, survive much. Keeps the Ling in turret uh, radius. Keeps the Ling over there, dealing all the damage to the Ling, sacrificing himself for that one last uh, attack of Ling. Gets a 1 for 1. The goal advantage, though, is slowly going over to the blue team. It's slowly going over the blue team. And we might have. Oh, but meanwhile, while the goal advantage was going over the blue team, the red team gets over the turret, and then the goal shifts back into the balance of the game, into the balance of things. Oh, there's the team action going down, going in for TQ. Killer gets slain by the Ling. Ling now sees blood, smells blood, going for the back line. Can Ling get something? Because Minotaur has just followed up. Now the rest of the team falls onto the red team. Going for the Nana at the back. Nana will not survive that as Ling uh, gets that kill. But Claw at the back line, dealing massive damage. Going get, go get a triple kill off that Minotaur. Going for the carry, also going for that... Um, Oh, I can't remember who is that. Going for Eddie at the back. So, of course... Oh, and finishes off the link for a minute. Can he get the final kill over there? Leomon's still going like, what a time ago. Oh, and that's, that mat that goes over to Uranus instead. Almost finishes off all five members by himself. Very nice play by the red team over there. Now the go advantage goes over slightly to the red team. And they will pick up whatever buffs in the bottom half of the map and will probably go for the turtle after they're done with the red buff but knowing that the blue team goes for the engage goes uh, for the contest at the red buff not being able to steal the red buff as the claw was able to take it away now with that turret down they shall shift their attention to the, the turtle getting more go while this is all happening just pay attention to the top Ling have to defend the top as the waves come crashing in for the red team The raid team now shall focus onto the middle lane, trying to knock down that middle lane and then knock down those doors, those fences, those defenses, and it will be an open map once that middle turret goes in. Ling, in the meanwhile, is being harassed by Cho. Cho not giving him life to breathe, but Ling will have life as he is able to skip around the fences and make it out alive. This is a very tight game. Just need one turn. 
Cho. Oh, look at that. Claude dealing so much damage, but the link goes in straight for the Claude. Trying to go for that, but Valia will not make it out of life. Carry is able to finish him off. And Claude will be over there, not wanting to engage in battle because he might not be able. Will he finish off the. Oh, the Esters, Esters, Esters. Healing that uh, Minotaur, keeping the Minotaur alive. Will this be a chance for Cho to re regain control at the top lane? Ling over there just um, hiding in the bush. Keeping a good distance, uh, poking him and making a run for it. Uranus is all by himself in the bot lane. But that is just a distraction as they wanted to go for the middle lane objectives. And Nana is able to stay alive uh, with the passive proc. This game is so tight. It is so close. It's shifting from one end to another. The link is slowly becoming a danger as he's able to burst down many of the uh, heroes for the raid team. And the Claude is just on a killing spree. 402. Nana wise. Um, five assists. Very good assist by the Nana. They will be moving. From objective to objective, this game is in 10 minutes, it's already close to the late game, in the mid game. They might, there's gonna be a battle going on, um, there might be a battle going on in the mid lane. Link's trying to, to open up the map, trying to have positional awareness. Minotaur going in, knocking them up. The Uranus is going down low and then Link finds the opportunity to go in at this point of time. Valor is gonna push the Link away with the Leomon being taking all the damage, but kept alive by Esther's and then not, um, Link goes in for backline, Carry goes in for the... This is a massacre as the raid, as the blue team is able to fall in onto the raid team, finishes off all the raid team tank, leaving Claude alive. They know that Claude is the most important damage dealer. Thank goodness that Claude is alive, but securing a 4-3, four, four, they will go and invade the um, raid jungle. Oh, the Claude got hit up by the Minotaur, but will be able to escape using his skill over there. He is the only one alive, keeping that turret going. Just look at the minion waves though, the pressure is going down the top lane and the bottom lane. Um, the, the map is being pushed, so the blue team will not overcome it and will not go for the next inner turret as um, they have the wave management to go. Blue team sees this is an opportunity for them, very important opportunity. We'll get the Lord. The very first Lord is not enhanced at the moment. They are changing our, their attention. They go in, dives in for that value, dives in for the Nana. Nana does, ha, does have a proc over there. Um, Link is still hunting for the Nana. Nana will not make it out, will make it out alive, fortunately for the Nana. However, their main damage dealer isn't around. Oh, by Uranus at the bottom, going in for the back door. Do they know about it? Will the red team keep the blue team? Um, um, Still alive, will the red team be able to make the blue team not go back and defend the, the bot lane? That will not happen because uh, Ling is, is down, Yomon is down, and they will shift their attention onto the the Lord at this point of time. This is objectives, this is playing mind games one another, carry, bursting down the Claude. This is the end of the three team mates for the red team. The tides will turn at this point juncture the lord goes over the blue team the carry gets three kills this is where the game starts to slip away from the raid team having controlled the game for most parts of it will the lord be able to be the defining difference in this team battle can the raid team turn this game around so many questions we would just want to see how the game plays out It's two seconds before the rest of the team is live. Uh, Uranus is slowing down the Lord. Together, Lord is enhanced, goes down, knocks down the turret. With that, they open the door, knock down the door. Is Claude gonna make it alive? Nana is destroyed by that. Claude can't do much damage to the back line. Cho is going down low. Will Cho make a difference? Cho can't make a difference. This is a triple kill by Carrie. Carrie picking off each of the heroes one by one. There's no reply for this. This, this is the game ending win. This is the game ending play. Claude and Vela doing the best to defend on all they can, but the turret is just gonna go down. Can Claude do his final ulti and get anything out of this? The Uranus is trying to down the turret, but Claude continues to 
mount onto that. Carry finding a great opportunity for going by, gets hit by the turret. Mino waves keep crashing in. This is a GG well played, fantastic play by Team One. And we have our champions of the very first online. <clears throat> And we have the champions of the very first online community rallies. Thank you for all for coming down and watching this and staying with us throughout these past six hours, past five to six hours. I am just so happy that you guys are part of this and have been taking a part in this community rallies with us. I'm coming to the conclusion. We will have a lucky draw, which we will announce into the Discord who wins. But give yourself a pat on the back. After give yourself a pat on back, have a sanitizer and, you know, clean your hands having played throughout the entire day. Wow, this is amazing. I really enjoyed that. This, this will be the sum up of the entire day. Um, basically, thank you all for coming here today. We will credit the points accordingly to all of you, all your different places. Um, stay tuned for our next monthly uh community rallies and this community rallies happen every third weekend of the month so i will see you again in may the third weekend of may till then thank you see you bye bye